Louisiana flooding trapped some people who rode out that storm. More than a million people in that state without power. We're going to hear from Louisiana's governor coming up. Al, of course, leading our team coverage from New Orleans. So shall we get to it? Yes. It is time for Today in 30. Hey everyone, I'm Tom Yamas for Today in 30. Just behind me, you can see some of the damage from Hurricane Ida. This is in the French Quarter. Most of the French Quarter is pretty much fine, but there are pockets of damage like this. This looks to be some roofing that came off, some siding, along with the traffic pole that came crashing down into one of the balconies here in the heart of the French Quarter. The big story, though, is gonna be some of the damage, but also the power outages. Nearly a million people across New Orleans and southeastern Louisiana without power right now. That's affecting everything from electricity in people's homes to cell service to also some sewage pumps. So a dire situation right now in New Orleans. Officials have been asking people who evacuated to stay where they are and people here to stay in their homes because it's too dangerous outside. We do want to begin live from New Orleans where Al Roker is. Al, what's the latest? Well, guys, you know, again, you look around, the sun is out. Uh, and other than the fact there's a kind of a lack of people, doors are closed and there's some sandbags, you would have never known that a Category 4 hurricane struck this state. And, and now the big question people are asking, they keep coming up to us because they see we're in the news. They say, what have you heard about the power? We hear it's going to be out for a month. People are frightened, but there's no communications because most of the cell service is gone. If you got AT&T, you're not getting any service. Other services, uh, some people, it's spotty. But as we look at what's happening right Right now with Ida, it's a tropical storm. It is pushing away 65 miles south, southwest Jackson, Mississippi. It's moving north at eight miles per hour. And what this is going to mean is that as Ida makes its way up the coast, I should say up the Mississippi River Valley, it's bringing a tornado risk along the Gulf Coast. It's also going to bring a lot of heavy moisture with it due to a front that will cause flooding in Tennessee and Kentucky. Continues Wednesday right on into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast and then finally Thursday moves off the coast. But with all that rain, believe it or not, we've got 55 million people at risk for flooding, stretching from Louisiana all the way to New Jersey and New York. Down to the south, we do have flash flood warnings out. As Ida starts to make its way north, those flood warnings are going to be moving north as well. And rainfall amounts, we're talking about another 12 inches of rain possible down through the lower uh, Mississippi River Valley. But even as we move up to the north through Thursday. We are looking at anywhere from three to five inches of rain, but locally could be as much as seven inches. Guys, back to you. Yeah, Al, a lot of people are questioning that power. I was hearing yeah. reports of uh, three weeks or more at this point. They're not 100% sure, but it's going to take a long time to get everything back online. But we have seen, yeah. and Al, I think you mentioned this, we've started to see some of those power crews yep. make their way through the streets of New Orleans to get that effort underway, correct? Yeah, we have. We've, we've seen two, two striking caravans about a, a 45 minutes ago. We saw a line of energy trucks. That's the local power authority here moving through. We also saw members of the Cajun Navy with those, those, uh, those uh, float boats with the big propellers on the back going mm -hmm. through about to try to uh, fan out and do a, a water rescues for people. And you can hear work going on right now. There, like I said, there is no power here. There's emergency generators going on. But, uh, you know, there and there is some damage. But for the most part, I think the biggest concern, as you guys said, it's about the power. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this entire city's out. What is that, like a million people? And, and with no... No discernible timeline from yeah. what we've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, there's a lot of desperation mm -hmm. already, guys. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks, Al. Al, we're there. We're going to actually talk to a member of that mm -hmm. uh, that Cajun Navy coming up in just and a few minutes. And we're also going to speak to the governor, and he may be able to answer some questions coming up, Al, in just a bit. But for now, let's turn to Tom Yamas. Tom, also there in New Orleans with a look at the damage there in the famed French Quarter. Tom, what are you starting to see as the sun's up? Hey, Craig, good morning to you. So we're still seeing a lot of damage. Luckily, most of the French Quarter is OK, but you see pockets of destruction like this just behind me. This is parts of a roof and a traffic pole that has collapsed onto a balcony, taking down portions of that balcony as well, along with an awning. Uh, we're seeing little pockets like this all over the French Quarter. But by and large, it seems like many of the structures here survived Hurricane Ida. But the big problem, as Al was just talking about, the catastrophic damage to the power grid. Right now, there is no electricity in New 
New Orleans. That means there are no power going to homes, to some sewage pumps, and to some cell phone towers. We're also following reports that a massive electrical tower collapsed into the Mississippi. That's part of the problem right now. I had a chance to run into some of those power crews as they were getting out to assess some of the damage around here in New Orleans. I could listen in, and their manager was giving them a morning pep talk saying, quote, this was going to be a marathon as Hurricane Ida carved a very serious path of destruction across southern Louisiana. This morning, New Orleans fighting Ida's fury and the mass power outages that came with it. The then Cat 4 hurricane barreling into southern Louisiana with catastrophic force. The deadly storm packing winds more than 150 miles per hour. These are by far the strongest winds we've felt so far. The bad part is it's only going to get worse. Triggering a life-threatening storm surge. Exactly 16 years after Hurricane Katrina made landfall. Many, many people are going to be tested in ways that we can only imagine. In Grand Isle on the Gulf Coast, terrifying images of Ida's wrath. Rising waters and whipping winds, leaving buildings partially submerged in water. Flooding outside the fire department, making it impossible for first responders to reach those in need. Those folks are just going to have to hunker down um, and wait for the storm to pass. Massive trees, no match for Ida's gusts. The winds oh ripping God. off part no, of a hospital's no. roof near the coast in Galliano and leaving mounds of debris on the streets of New Orleans' French Quarter. The damage so bad, the entire city now without power. Ida's rapid rise to a Category 4 storm, taking even the experts by surprise. Officials counting on improvements made in the years since Katrina to keep people safe. We were able to tell people to shelter in place with some degree of comfort. Ultimately, if we have to evacuate people post-storm, we will do that. The Ergen family making the last minute decision to stay close to their businesses here in New Orleans. If I knew what I know now, then we would have left, but we ran out of time. In the Lower Ninth Ward, scars from Katrina are everywhere. The sign means that this house was flooded during Katrina. Chris Washington's family left, but he chose to ride out the storm. This area was devastated during Katrina. Do you have faith the levees are going to hold? Yes, I have it. The most vulnerable under threat from the storm. More than 50 seniors reportedly forced to evacuate the Metairie Towers condominiums in the New Orleans area after a partial roof collapse. And Louisiana's Oxner Health System, already packed with people fighting COVID, now feeling Ida's wrath. This video showing what appears to be pieces of the roof flying off their main campus. Oxner protectively moving all of their facilities to generator power and making room for patients with storm-related injuries. Right now we're just hunkering down and staying put. All right, and we do have some new reporting this morning for the Today Show on Oxner's Health Systems. They are the largest hospital chain in this area. They tell me they did have to evacuate two hospitals, a hospital in Raceland and a hospital in Homa, what they call sort of the Bayou Area Hospitals. Seventy-five patients are being brought here to Jefferson Parish and Orleans Parish, so the New Orleans area. The hospitals here, as you saw in my report, they did suffer some damage. They have roofers out there now fixing all of those uh, damaged roofs and uh, broken out windows, things like that. We we do know they have a 10-day supply of both fuel and water and energy, so they're going to be okay at least for the next week or two. They have more supplies coming. Most importantly, guys, though, the CEO tells me no patient, no staff member was injured during this hurricane. And just like a lot of people here, they are operating in many ways using landline phones because of this problem with the cell phones. Yeah, a little Back bit of good guys. news there. All right, Tom, thank you so much. We're joined now by Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards. Governor Edwards, good morning. Uh, I know you've had a long, long night. Sun is up, and now you can kind of assess. So let's just start big picture, okay? What are your biggest concerns with what you've seen, and what, have, what are kind of your biggest reliefs? Well, the biggest concern is we're still doing search and rescue, and we have individuals all across southeast Louisiana, principally Lafouche, Terrebonne, portions of Jefferson Parish, uh, St. John the Baptist, uh, who are in a bad place right now because their their homes have been damaged to the point where they're uninhabitable. Uh, many still have standing water in their homes, uh, and they need to be rescued. So we're we're still in very much in the search and rescue, the life saving mode, uh, and there's a very robust effort 
but there's so much debris, power lines and, and trees and, and other debris in the roadways uh, that it hasn't been easy getting to them. But I can tell you, starting at three o'clock this morning, uh, we dispatch hundreds and hundreds of urban search and rescue uh, personnel, uh, high water boats, I'm sorry, yeah, high water vehicles, uh, boats and so forth. Right now we have the entire National Guard, you're looking at them right there, uh, uh, mobilized uh, and we have 34 aircraft, about 195 of these high water vehicles that you're looking at, uh, 73 boats. So so that's the first order of priority. Mm -hmm. Second order of priority is, is making sure that our hospitals are able to continue to function uh, because we have electricity issues all throughout Southeast Louisiana. And we also have some water issues. You can't run chillers without waters and, and water and you can't do dialysis without water. Uh, and, but the, the, the biggest um, uh, thing that, that happened in a positive way, Hoda, is the lead system really work. Uh, especially the hurricane risk reduction system there that protects Orleans and Jefferson Parish. And I know you know this area very well. Uh, it didn't overtop. There was there was no failure, uh, and the situation in New Orleans, as bad as it is today, without the power, would be so much worse. All you have to do is go back 16 years, and you kind of get a glimpse of what that could have been like. But even further south, in Lafourche and Terrebonne parishes, for example, the the levee system really held up very well. Otherwise, we would be facing much more uh, problems today. Uh, but the the damage is really catastrophic. This storm packed a very powerful punch. It delivered the surge that was that was forecasted, the wind that was forecasted, and the rain. And, and so we're gonna be uh, responding to this hurricane for, for quite a while, and then we're gonna be recovering from it for oh. many months. Oh, I know. Governor Edwards, let's talk about it, because power and water are two things you need to survive. So we're talking about New Orleans Paris and Jefferson Parish. There's, there's water issues in Jefferson Parish. And in Orleans Parish, someone from Entergy was talking about pre-storm, maybe three weeks if the power goes out. So how, what is the plan here? Well, as you, as you know, Hoda, the, the storm just exited the mm -hmm. state several hours ago. The sun has been up for about three hours. Uh, we have people uh, with the Public Service Commission and Entergy and other power companies out assessing the damage right now. Uh, the bad news is there are eight main transmission lines going into the New Orleans area, uh, all of which failed. The good news is there are eight lines and they're not all going to be damaged the same. And so we believe that there should be an opportunity uh, to power up uh, much of New Orleans relatively soon uh, through one of those lines. But but we're, we're still working on that. And there are some, some other options there, too. And while we're talking about New Orleans, I want you to know this is the issue for all of southeast Louisiana. Uh, and it really isn't a million people without power. It's a million accounts. So those are homes or businesses. Uh, and so my guess is, and th this is this is in the neighborhood of a guess, it's probably closer to two million people without power right now. Yeah. And and yeah. We're, we're working as hard as we can. Uh, there are the, another bit of good news: well over twenty thousand linemen. Uh, the, the largest response effort ever in the state of Louisiana this quickly uh, to restore power. Uh, they, they are they are either here already or they're going to be here at some point later today uh, to start this restoration work. And Governor Edwards, we were watching some of the rescues. A couple of them showed up online, people getting plucked out of their cars, their flooded cars. And I know in Laplace, they talked about maybe a thousand people who were at least asking to be rescued from their cars. And a number that that I saw was that well, there was only one death at this point. Is that what you're hearing? Well, we have one confirmed death. Uh, I, I don't want to tell you what I'm hearing because what I'm hearing points to a lot more than that. They're not yet confirmed, and, and I really don't want to go there. I, I, I will, I will leave it here. I am certain uh, that as the day goes on, we will have more deaths. Uh, so we, we were getting calls for help. We know that, for example, some apartment buildings uh, collapsed partially in certain areas. This happened during the height of the storm, and there was no way to go out and respond to those calls. Uh, that's happening now, and, and we're going to be getting information throughout the day that, that I fully expect the, the confirmed death total to go up considerably. All right. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, I know it's a difficult time, a difficult night, and it'll be difficult days ahead, but Louisiana has a way of rising up. So we're rooting we for you. Thank you very much. 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Right now, though, we're going to turn to that volatile situation in Afghanistan. Overnight, a barrage of rockets fired at Kabul's airport. The attack came after a U.S. drone strike on a vehicle carrying a suspected ISIS-K suicide bombers. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel once again for us in Doha, Qatar. Richard, good morning to you. Good morning, Craig. This is an extremely critical time. Less than 24 hours to go. The United States is coordinating with the Taliban to make this exit from Afghanistan go as smoothly as possible. But ISIS is determined to attack. The United States has been count, uh, conducting counter strikes to prevent ISIS from attacking. And Afghans say that civilians have been killed. The smoldering ruins this morning of a car apparently used to launch rockets at the Kabul airport. Ignited, it seems, by the rocket engines. At least five rockets, the Taliban reports. The U.S. military says anti-missile systems were engaged. The Taliban promising house-to-house -house searches for the ISIS militants believed responsible. This weekend, it was the U.S. that fired on ISIS. The U.S. military saying it carried out a precision strike on an ISIS car bomb heading to the airport. But the Taliban are disputing that. A commander telling NBC News the U.S. hit a house killing civilians, including children. Local reports say as many as nine killed. The U.S. military acknowledging civilians may have been killed by the ISIS bomb when it exploded. This after last Thursday's horrific ISIS suicide bombing at an airport gate, killing 13 U.S. service members, nearly all Marines. Their remains solemnly transferred to the United States. The tragedy of lives cut short, including Sergeant Nicole Gee, who had helped in the evacuations, posting this photo just days ago, captioned, I love my job. Around 200 Afghans were killed in the suicide bombing at the gate. And yet, amid all of this, the evacuation planes are still flying. The evacuation now taking place in secret as U.S. forces reach the most dangerous phase of the mission, pulling out the troops, protecting the evacuees and themselves, as the Taliban assert more and more control of daily life. This was a political debate on Afghanistan TV, a small station. The discussion was about how the former president escaped the country before the Taliban entered Kabul. The Taliban say they'll allow a free press. What a way to show it. This is now a violent race to the finish. And it raises the question, what about all the people who are left behind? The U.S. is in the final stages of the evacuation. People are not able to get onto the air base anymore. Many Afghans are frightened. And it looks at this stage that they're going to have to wait for the civilian airport to open up. No indication when that might happen, however. Back to you. Our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engelforce, there in Doha. Richard, thank you. 
Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. With Xfinity X5. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. Hello. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Padma Lakshmi. Thanks for watching Today in 30. My children's book, Tomatoes for Neela, comes out tomorrow. So please get a copy. It's a book about intergenerational family cooking together. And it's also about eating vegetables and fruits like tomatoes when they're in season because a family that eats seasonally is also a family that eats more healthy and better for the environment. It's also about writing down recipes with your kids. Recipes are a great way to teach kids math, fractions, spelling, uh, giving clear directions, sequential thinking, all of that. And the family that cooks together is a family that is more likely to eat well together. Tune in to see more tips. You know Padma Lakshmi is a best-selling cookbook author as well as the host of as Bravo's Top Chef and Hulu's Taste of the Nation. She's always teaching us about the connection between culture and food. And guess what? She's got a new book out. It's a cool one. It's called Tomatoes for Neela. She's bringing that beautiful lesson to children. Look at you, Miss Children's Book author. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited. I mean, it, I love children's literature, and I have bought so many books, you know, for Krishna, my daughter, over the years. And um, this is based on a story that I used to tell her at bedtime because she came home wanting pomegranates in the summer. Okay. And I just realized that, you know, this child doesn't live near a farm or an orchard and has no idea where anything grows, because if you're lucky enough to be able to go to a good grocery store, mm -hmm. everything's available all right, the time right. in our land of plenty. So um, I started with tomatoes, and it's based on that story, and it's to tell children when our fruits and vegetables grow in what season near us, because you know, teaching a child how to eat seasonally is also teaching them about the environment. It's teaching them you know, about nutrition, because not only are uh, vegetables and fruits really tasty when they're in season, they're also better for you. And it's also about cooking with your family members, every family member in the family, because I think everyone has a part to play. This book is beautiful, by the way. I feel like it's all about love. It's got so many lessons in here, and I love the lessons of cooking and being with families. But the first thing I thought when I looked at this cover, which is really breathtaking, was I thought about you and your daughter. Like, I looked and I said, oh my God, is that Padma and her daughter, who you said is now 11 years old. Yes. But why, um, what does, first of all, what does she think of this? And why was it important to kind of depict someone like you and your daughter in this book? Well, when I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of books that had, you know, characters with darker skin tones. And, you know, I grew up with Filipinos and Mexicans yeah, yeah. and everybody. And, yeah. um, you know, it, that was fine to have, yeah. European-American or Caucasian skin tones, but I think it's nice yeah. 
to have all kinds of skin tones for characters for children's books for all kids because representation is important. Yeah. I want everybody and every family to see themselves in Neela and her amma. And I use Indian words, you know, the mother has a nose ring and they also have a grandma who's called Pati, which is uh -huh. the word for grandma in Tamil. And they have a relationship with her. And in the pandemic, we've all not been able to get together with grandparents, but you know, the grandmother has a very important part to play in teaching the child about recipes. And it's also about writing down recipes. I think um, recipes are a great way to teach kids all of the things they're learning developmentally anyway, like spelling, mm -hmm. uh, sequential ordering, yeah. Uh, yeah. fractions, math. Yeah. And so I did that with Krishna when I was teaching her, when I was testing recipes, I would give her little tomatoes and a serrated butter knife and she would write down in her notebook those recipes. Oh, that's the cutest thing. Did this pass the Krishna test, this book? Did you run, did you run it by her? What did she think I, when she saw it? I did, and yeah. she knows the story well. There was a squirrel in the initial story that uh -huh. I told her that got the ax, because it was a lot. There's tomato facts in the yeah. book. Uh, there's back matter about farm workers because it's important to respect everyone in the food chain, and there's also resources for parents who want to teach uh, their children more about farm workers and, and that whole situation. But also, it's really just um, about cooking together. Because the earlier you can get children involved in the food they eat, the more likely they are to eat well. A child that has a hand in making their own food is a child that will take pride in their food. Yeah. And if you give a gift, the gift of good eating to a child early on, that will serve them and benefit them long after we're out of their lives. You know, um, you can have them shell peas, you can have them break ends off beans, and it's an activity for the family to do together. I picture, I'm just picturing you as a mother right now, and I, <laughs> we've known you for so many years. You, were, you came on this show as we were pointing out when you were pregnant. You've yes. had Krishna, she's now 11 years yeah. old. What's your favorite part of motherhood? Um, it, it changes every day yeah. because yeah. she's changing every day and yeah. so am I and you know when when young parents ask me how do you get your kid to eat healthy I say well how do you eat you know I, I oh, that's it that's I, the answer I really believe in incorporating children into the daily life that's normal as early and as is age appropriate but soon you know, don't shield your kids from stuff. Let them experience stuff with you. Let them see you cry. Let them see you fail. Wow. You know, if you can. I mean, she certainly sees me do all those things. I can tell you that. Well, Padma, I have to say, this book, Tomatoes for Neela, is gorgeous. Like, every page is beautiful. It's got a beautiful story. It's got recipes in the back. I know people are going to love it, so I hope people pick it up again, the new book, Tomatoes for Neela. And this one you signed for me and for yes, my I girls. Do. So thank you so much. We're going to read it tonight. And for more on that, you can get your hands on it. Head over to today.com slash shop. Thank, thank you. you, Padma. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today All Day. Every Day. Wherever you are, today is there. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices whenever and however you watch with Xfinity x -Fi. And tune in tomorrow because One Republic is going to be here. We're going to get some music. Uh, we'll have that much more tomorrow bright and early right here on Today.
Hi today all day. Hope you're ready for some laughs. Coming up, we put your favorite celebrities to the test as they take on the six minute marathon. Plus, we've got some of my personal favorite sit down interviews from the last few months. So get excited as today all day continues right now. Do you know what the six minute marathon is? I know you're gonna ask me a ton of questions and I'm just gonna answer as many of them as I can in six minutes. That is the six minute marathon in a nutshell. <laughs> Padma Lakshmi, thank you for being here on the six minute marathon. My pleasure. First question, if you could only listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? D'Angelo, Voodoo. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> All right. What is the strangest gift you've ever received? Somebody gave me a tooth once. A to did you, I'm sorry, did you say a tooth? Okay, there's so many follow-up questions. We may have to spend the whole six minutes on this. <laughs> why, why, whose tooth? It was just this guy, he was odd, but he was very artistic. He, um, I think he was playing ball or something, and he either fell or was in the midst of a game, and it, he broke his tooth, and he was like, "I saved it for you." And I was... so it was an adult tooth. That was my next question. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where's the tooth now? I don't know. See, I, I don't know think questions. I don't think it made it like back from college, if you know what I mean. You know, yeah. I think I was just like, this is too weird. Have you ever been mistaken for another celebrity? And if so, who? Yes, when I was 14 and in the mall, which I thought of as a huge compliment, Apollonia. Remember Apollonia? Apollonia? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was a teenager, like I said. Um, Gal Gadot, I've also gotten mistaken for. Um, let me see. In the early days when I had a perm in high school, um, uh, Irene Cara, but also, so it has just happened recently, but recently it was just Gal Gadot and the New Yorker magazine of all people have always dreamed of having my name in the New Yorker, of course, as a writer. They put a picture of me because I chose a cartoon for them and then they wrote that it was Priyanka Chopra. I'm like, I know all us Indian women look alike, but really? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's like that's that's a pretty like pretty epic row of like beautiful ladies to be compared to. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all nice and flattering. Yeah. Oh, that's good. What is your guilty pleasure? I feel no guilt in taking pleasure in life, so I don't feel guilty about anything that gives me pleasure. Like, I think I'm a 50 year old woman. I deserve all the pleasure I can get from now until I die. <laughs> Okay, if you could be friends with a movie or TV character, who would it be? Um, well, it's not a character, it's a real person. Um, I would love to be friends with Brianna. Yeah. I just think she'd be so much fun if she let me hang out with her. But, um, and I've never met her and I don't think I want to in a way. I'd hang out with her, but if I just had to meet her, I just think it would burst my bubble. But um, all of my characters are real life characters. Mahabra Ali, Dorothy Parker, Lenny Bruce, Cleopatra, you know. That'd be a good dinner party for you to right? host. Yeah, definitely. What was your least favorite food as a child? Eggplant. <laughs> Do you like it now? I mean, I love it now. I love eggplant. Who have you been starstruck meeting? Mother Teresa. I met her. I got to spend the day with her in the 90s. Um, I cut a ribbon at the World Cup of Cricket that was happening in Calcutta. And um, a group of people said, we're going, would you like to join? I literally tagged along, but she was mesmerizing. She was so comforting and charismatic. And you know how you feel when you're like a little kid in the safety and comfort of your mom's arms, all is well within the world. That's how you feel in her presence, at least I did. Do you have a personal mantra? And if so, what is it? It is, um, everything is a benefit if you look at it the right way. Even the most difficult things that have happened to me, I have tried to focus on what I can gain from them or what uh, what is the bright side? What can I gain, you know, what can, what can I get out of this? You know, even 
um, endometriosis, which was very painful and I went through for over 20 years. I like to look at that experience as what gave me the fuel to start the foundation with my surgeon. And so I think it must have been, you know, destined for me to go through that because um, otherwise the pain doesn't make sense. It's so unnecessary so that I could turn that pain into power. What did you want to be when you grew up? I, the, my first job that I ever dreamed of being was an airline stewardess. An airline, a flight attendant. We used to call, you know. We I'm call them old. stewardesses, I know. We're the same yes. age. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So I just thought they were the most glamorous people on earth. You know, I flew as an unaccompanied minor when I was four to America from India. And they just, I was on Air India Airlines. They had these beautiful printed silk saris. It was the early 70s, it was beautiful bouffant hair, lots of eyeliner and lashes. You know, they were just like walk up and down those aisles with their saris fluttering, you know, behind them. I just thought they have so much freedom. They get to travel all over the world. And that's what I want to do. What do you think you are much better at than you actually are? Oh, I think I'm a better skater. I always think, oh, today is the day that I'm going to seamlessly skate forwards and then backwards. Do you roller skate a lot? Yes, get a pair of roller skates. It's so fun. Do you remember doing it when you were little? Yes, I, we used to go to skate country, go around the ring. Yes, get, I could never skate, skate backwards, but I tried. No, you have to. I will go skate. I'll meet you wherever you want. I know all the flat parts of the city where there's not a lot of traffic. Do not try and skate in Central Park. All right, last question. This is an easy one. What is your favorite reality show? Top Chef. Thank you, Padma Lakshmi. So great to talk to you. This was fun. Nice to talk to you, too. See you at three. Bye. <laughs>
What is your favorite family tradition? Oh, my favorite favorite family tradition would definitely have to be having hot cocoa with whipped cream and some peppermint sprinkles on top of the whipped cream with a handy cane on Christmas morning. Oh, can I come over? Yeah, no, I we, we love it, so. That sounds delicious. <laughs> what show or shows of your own do you re-watch? Oh my goodness. You know what I have to say? The Tia and Samira reality show, it's been playing right now, so I tend to watch that. Of course, sister, sister, that's like always playing on something. Dad? Mom? That girl has my face! All of the older ones that I've done, like in the past, you know, to kind of get back to some sort of memories in some kind of way. Is yeah. it fun to see yourself at that age? It is, it is. I mean, it's, it's also um, shocking at times <laughs> when I'm like, what were you wearing? Because, you know, it was like I was going through growing pains. But um, it is. I just, I feel so grateful when I look back at um, projects that I've done because I've, it, it kind of shows me that I've been in this business for such a long time and I'm just very appreciative. So. What's the most embarrassing or funniest story from your childhood? Oh my gosh, these are so raw. <laughs> I know. Um, I, I'll get to something shallow in a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> Um, okay, the most embarrassing thing from my childhood, I remember my brother was on this show with Patti LaBelle called Out All Night, and there was this famous group that was on the show, and they were a singing group, and their name is called Shy. Um, and I ended up pulling out my hand out of my coat uh, pocket, and it was a tampon. <laughs> oh, gosh. How old were you? You must have... Die. I was like, oh yeah, I was like 14, 15, oh. and they were this huge popular group. And I was like, oh, I didn't pick it up. I just stared at it, you know? I was like, this is like, embarrassing. Who, is this? who does this belong to? <laughs> what is this doing here? <laughs> yeah, it was like the elephant in the room. You know what oh. I mean? <laughs> oh, God, oh, I God, feel I hope, I'm not, I hope I'm not being too honest with these with No, these I answers. love honesty, it's the best okay. policy. Okay. I love it, especially on the six minute marathon. Oh okay. my gosh. Here's some easy ones. What's your favorite thing to cook, if you cook? Oh my gosh, I love to cook. My favorite thing to cook would definitely have to be spaghetti and meatballs. It's something that the whole entire family likes, my kids and my husband, so. Yeah, I think my kids live on meatballs. I think yeah. meatballs might be a five day a week. It's just a classic. Know. Yeah, it's a classic dish that everybody loves, so. What's your hype up song right now? Oh my gosh, my hype up song has been this for a very, very long time just because I'm a huge fan of Beyonce. Mm. And you know that uh, song, Who Runs the World? Girls. Who yeah. Runs the World? Girls. I just love, you know, women. I think women are incredible. I think we are beasts when it comes to getting things done. We're multitaskers. So whenever I'm either on the treadmill or if I'm just kind of overwhelmed, she kind of, you know, gets me right where I need to be to do what I have to do, because she reminds me, you know? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> heels or flats? Oh my gosh, totally heels. Heels oh, all the way. Hey, flats. No, I mean, you know, when I was pregnant, um, I had to wear, you know, a lot of flats. Um, and I hated it. I would literally force my feet into my um, heels. You know, when you're pregnant, your feet kind oh. of swell. Yes. I would literally I force my feet into heels just because I love them. I think it just gives me a little bit of attitude. So. Okay, if you could be friends with a movie or TV character, who would it be? Oh, Julia Roberts, Pretty Woman. I just love her personality in, in that movie and she's, she's, she was just so much fun, you know what I mean? What is your biggest professional accomplishment so far? I would definitely have to say being a co-founder of my supplement line called Answer, mainly because it was birthed through my personal experience um, with wellness and health and just being able to inspire women and just people in general to take charge of their health and their wellness. It makes me feel so good. So I would, I would say that. You're an entrepreneur in addition to everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you a morning bird or a night owl? I'm definitely 
a morning bird. I used to be a night owl, but after having children, that ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now it's, you know, I mean, this is easy for me waking up early in the morning, you know, I, you know, because I have two kids. So, and my daughter, she's actually up right now. I don't know if you heard her crying, but <laughs> um, I'm, I'm used to it. Morning yeah. person. I didn't know if it was your kid crying or my kid crying. So. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it could have been either way. So I get it. Yeah. Tia, thank you so much. This is six minutes. You're already done. See, it was fast. Wow. That was fast. Thank you so much. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. With Xfinity X5. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Seth Meyers. Welcome to Six Minutes with Savannah. And this will be six minutes long? It will be six minutes and not a second longer. Oh, is there a timer? Yeah, you answer as many questions as you can in six, six minutes. Six minutes, okay. Yes. I can talk really fast if it helps. Okay, sure. Okay. What is the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? I am so historically not a spontaneous <laughs> person. I, oh my God, what is the most spontaneous thing? I guess we bought our dog. We bought our dog Frisbee, it was very spontaneous. Oh. We had been dog sitting someone else, and then when we returned their dog, uh, we were very sad, and so we uh, uh, bought a dog. What, um, what kind of dog? An Italian Greyhound. Was this before or after you had kids? This was before we had kids. Obviously. Yeah, 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 very much so. Because <laughs> if you have two little boys under four, you're yeah. not getting a dog. If you want to do six minutes with our dog Frisbee, she'd probably have a lot to say about the boys. <laughs> what are you most scared of? What are my heights? Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go old school and just tell you I'm afraid of heights. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite family tradition? Uh, once a year in the fall, this is, oh my God, my wife's gonna be so bad. I immediately went to my uh, parents and my brother. Is that all right? Yeah, of okay, course. Okay, gotcha, because I have another family at home. Oh yeah. But they're, my kids are too young and they haven't developed Family, uh, I didn't ability. define it. That's true. But my feeling my wife could, uh, uh, you know, she could point out that I immediately jumped to my pre-existing family. Uh, every fall, uh, we go to Pittsburgh and go to a Steelers game together for my mom's birthday. Oh, that's so so nice, because your dad's from Pittsburgh, right? My dad's right? from Pittsburgh, and it's really fun. But where did you grow up? I grew up in New Hampshire. That's what yeah. I thought. That's what I. That's what the research stated. <laughs> that's an excellent. Would you rather give up alcohol for a year or give up your phone for a month? Uh, phone for a month. Agree. What's your favorite drink? Oh uh, gosh, like a, a good tequila. Oh, what's your favorite tequila? That's my drink too. I I mostly just ask when I'm at a place. Mm -hmm. Give me a good tequila. 
Yeah. Do you put What's lime your favorite? Or, I like. I call it actually. I named it the Savanita. Oh. You know, like margarita, but Savannah. Oh, Nobody gotcha. else. They don't know what that is. Yeah, but yeah. It's just it's tequila with sparkling water and lime juice. I would just have this, the lime juice, like fresh lime juice and yeah. tequila. Lots of ice, though, right? Yeah, yep. There's a crisis. People don't put enough ice in. I also sometimes my least favorite thing at a bar or a restaurant is when you order a drink that looks really good on the cocktail menu and it comes up like in a martini glass with no ice. Yes, forget it. Upset. I think they should always have a drawing of what the glass looks like. <laughs> exactly. And perhaps a description of the ice. Yeah. If there were a movie made about your life so far, what would the title be? What would the title be? Lucky fella. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> What's the last thing you searched for on Google? What's the last thing I searched for on Google? Wow, that's a good question. What's the last thing? You I know what you're doing right now? Trying, trying to avoid not to the lie. things that I'd said. But what you actually no, searched was like to lie. foot fungus. Yeah. No, uh, but <laughs> you're like, what is the thing I can say that I last searched for? I'm trying to think. What was the last thing I searched for? Go, oh, uh, you guys had a golfer on. Yes, and Gary Woodland. Uh, Gary Woodland, who had a, a lovely story uh, with your guest Amy. Just, uh, I watched that piece so that I would be able to appreciate that very good segment. And it was show. adorable. It was yes. What would you most, or who would you most like to be stuck in an elevator with? I would most like to be stuck in an elevator with Bruce Springsteen. Right? Great. Yeah. Great then choice. I could ask him all the questions and it wouldn't be like I was wasting his time because where else is he going to be? And he could always sing some acapella. Ideally. Assuming he didn't have his guitar with him. Ideally. If you were stuck on a desert island but could bring one type of food with you to eat forever, what would you bring? Chicken fingers. Really? Yeah. You like a lot of toddler food? I do. Well, I didn't really. I mean, I feel like the nice thing about living in New York is there's a lot of, there's sort of like a, a medium to high tier chicken finger that you can get in this city. There is. Yeah. Like Dirty Bird. You ever go to Dirty Bird? Yes, I do. I love Dirty yeah. Bird. What is your guilty pleasure? Uh, yeah, now I kind of, I feel like with tequila and chicken fingers, I really, <laughs> we really not, knocked them both out. I don't know what my guilty pleasure is. Probably one version of that. Chicken fingers and tequila yeah, together. Like dipping a chicken finger in the tequila. Haven't thought about yeah, that, yeah. but. You might go. be on to something. If you could relive one year in your life, which one would it be? I, I'll have this. I'm going to tell you if I could relive one day in my life, yes. I know specifically what it would be. What? It would be, and again, this is bad, but I do, I'm hoping my wife Your wedding this. day? No. Uh, <laughs> that would be the second one. The day I found out I got SNL was the most exciting day oh. because it was before any of the stress of SNL started, and all I got to do for a whole day was call people and tell them. I'm a writer for SNL. Yeah. And. You'd been in comedy before. I'd been in comedy, so it was like a lot of people who'd been really supportive of me all of those years. It was really an exciting thing to do. What was the audition like? What did you have to do? Submit writing or did you have to perform? I, I, I performed. It was a five minute on stage audition, but stuff you wrote where you sort of did impressions and characters. Was Lorne there? Lorne was there. Was he looking forlorn? He was, always <laughs> looks a little forlorn. He does. He's very, I will say, Rachel Dratch, who I did not know, but a friend of mine knew her, gave me the best piece of, not quite advice, but a tip which was when you audition, no one will laugh. And that's a really good thing that then I told everybody who ever auditioned, because people do laugh a little bit, mm -hmm. and so if you hear no one's gonna laugh, if you hear even a little bit of a laugh, you think, oh, I'm crushing it. Do they do that on purpose so that you'll be intimidated? No, I will say they do that because they have probably seen 20 people in a day and they're just a little tired. You're not that funny. <laughs> it's, you, you realize people who work at SNL and you know their whole day is spent surrounded by you know, fed the best people in the world. Like sometimes it's very hard to be uh, surprised and delighted by you know people who are just starting out in it. Yeah. What about karaoke? What's your go-to tune? Um, I don't care for karaoke, um, but it would be Thunder Road if I've had enough of those tequila chicken fingers. And if you were in the elevator with Bruce, I would say, Hey, do you want to hear a different version, a different bounce on? <laughs> just say I, I have a different artistic interpretation yeah. of it. The way you do it is great. Don't get me wrong, but I think you're gonna like this. Uh, we're almost out of time. I'm gonna save you here with your beautiful wife, Alexi. Okay. What is the most important trait in a partner? Oh, what's the most? I mean, she's she ticks off so many. She has so many traits. The most important trait in a partner is, you know, my wife's really intelligent and like shows me the world in a way that I didn't see it beforehand. Uh, and on top of her being really loving and supportive, that's a really cool thing, is that you meet somebody and then you think you have a handle on how everything looks and you see it a different way and it just increases your world. Seth Myers, thank you so much. Thanks, I think I broke the record. And I get this? Oh yes, God, you do, you. you're welcome. This is beautiful. We'll be sending you a bill. Thank you. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. This is Jeopardy. The theme song, the contestants. So I know, I know, you're wondering, has Ken Jennings quit his day job yet? The game of answers and questions. Who is Sherlock Holmes? What is Hijack? Who's Carl Sagan? What is Debunk? For me, the opportunity to guest host Jeopardy was a dream come true. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Jeopardy is iconic. It's this legendary show. Everyone loves it. I can't believe it. I'm here to guest host Jeopardy. Here we go. Jeopardy is America's favorite quiz show with a cult following and the awards to prove it. For 37 seasons and more than 8,000 episodes, Alex Trebek was the maestro behind it all. The thing about watching someone host Jeopardy, when you see Alex Trebek, he made it look easy. She is also known as Belcalis Almanzar. Gabe. Who is Cardi B? Correct. I watched a lot of Jeopardy to prepare. I watched a lot of Alex's episodes. If you want to learn how to be good at something, you watch the person who is the absolute best. Julia? Who is Kanye West? Yes, and I hope uh, I don't get an email from him. <laughs> <laughs> Once they gave me the clues, I read them over and over again and made little notes and practiced my pronunciation with mixed results, let's just say. <laughs> we take fluffs and imperfection. Thank God. After a full day of production meetings and rehearsals. It takes a village to pit crews in. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, you ladies, matched your outfits. I like that. <laughs> All right. And meeting the real stars. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? <laughs> Katie, Jonathan, and Caitlin. Welcome to Jeopardy. You're all so young and cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in it together. The point is to have fun. It's a game. It was showtime. Five, four, three, two, one. The moment was surreal. And now, here is the guest host of Jeopardy, Savannah Guthrie. Hi. Thank you so much, Johnny Gilbert. Hi, everybody. I am really excited to be here on this iconic stage, guest hosting Jeopardy. I kind of want to pinch myself. The Jeopardy schedule is not for the faint of heart, taping 10 shows in 10 outfits in just two days. Let's do it. Katie, you're our champion today, so you'll be choosing first from these categories. Let's take a look at what we've got. Is that show one? We did it! Yay! I'll take relieved anchors for 1,000. The first game is done. Only nine more to go. They haven't kicked me out yet. After a whirlwind week, that was a wrap. This experience over the past two weeks has been such an honor. I would never have any chance to actually be a contestant on Jeopardy, so this is the closest I could ever come. It's beyond my wildest dreams. So the question is, how did I do? She uh, kept everything moving along with the questions. It was just all around great. She's great at uh, thinking on her feet. She read the clues beautifully. She ran the game beautifully. Uh, tons across the board. Thank you so much. 
so much. It Thank really was a joy, such a joy. Being here, standing behind this podium, I have a new appreciation. It was hard. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it's also one of the best things I've ever done. I knew Alex was an icon before I came here and guest hosted Jeopardy. But what I didn't know or couldn't really feel was how much he is loved and missed in these halls. I'm more in awe of him. I'm in awe of his skill, but I'm mostly in awe of his goodness. And it's so reflected in the people who work with him. Hey, today, all day, we've got a great show for you on this Monday morning. Jenna and I take you around the world to some unique destinations that you'll want to add to your bucket list. But what do you say we kick it off with Popstar? Okay, Fixer Upper star Chip Gaines decided to chop off some of his hair to raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So for every donation milestone reached, Chip would chop off extra inches of his hair. So how much did he have to cut off? Take a look. All right, Mr. Daly, you got a little pop start for us? We do, guys. We're going to start this morning with Broadway. Broadway making a big comeback, and they're doing it in a big way. This morning, we're highlighting the start of a new campaign to bring audiences back to New York's theater district. It's called This is Broadway, and is the result of theater owners and actors and professionals all getting together to celebrate the comeback of an industry hit especially hard during the pandemic. And we have for you this morning a new look, a first look of the new short film that's narrated by Oprah that highlights Broadway's rich history. Take a look. Hello. This is Broadway, the beginning of something truly spectacular, where you know you'll always get goosebumps. This is where time stops every time a show starts. This is Broadway, and we can't wait to welcome you home. To watch the entire short film and learn more about This Is Broadway initiative, you can head to today.com. Next up, the Foo Fighters. You may remember lead singer Dave Grohl's drum battle with 11-year-old music phenom Nandy Bushel. She's the YouTube star who caught Dave's attention when she covered Nirvana's In Bloom and then did Everlong by Foo Fighters. Now things have come full circle. This weekend, Foo Fighters invited Nandy on stage to actually perform Everlong when they were at the Forum in Los Angeles, her excited dad taping that performance from backstage. Oh, oh. oh she's Come just on. showing off now. Come on. That is awesome. Yes. Rock star moment to remember forever. Wow, and not shy. Finally, Chip Gaines, Gaines, we've known to love perhaps his locks. Do we love his locks? I don't, not sure. I don't know, but we no. reported on Pop Start last week that Chip has decided to chop off some of his hair to raise money for St. Jude's Hospital. Every donation milestone reads, Chip would chop off extra inches of his hair. So the question is, how much did he have to cut off? Well, see for yourself. Chip posted a video of the big haircut on Instagram. I'm going to be a handsome, bald person. Hey, Chip, you ready to see your fixer upper? <laughs> what? That is a bald head. I've got a you lot of good, feeling, babe. a lot of all the emotions. And you, you know? did it for a great cause. Oh, I think it's so cause. special. Okay. How about that? Dude, Completely I'm bald cool. now. But that campaign raised a whopping $509,000 for St. Jude. So, Chip, good on you, man. That's well, awesome. All right, Carson, thank yep. you. Coming up next on Today Talks, it's Make Ahead Monday, and we have the perfect recipe for an easy weeknight meal. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's good. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> 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 Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity x -Fi. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, our pal Matt Abdu is here with chicken cutlets on the menu. Take a look. Welcome back to the third hour of today. We have been talking about many of the challenges, making back to school tougher than ever this year, but dinner should not be one of them. You've got a little something on your collar. I'm not, it's not food. I'm not bleeding <laughs> from my neck. It's a science experiment, everybody. Don't worry. Well, here to share easy recipes that are perfect for a weeknight meal, executive chef and owner of Pig Beach in Brooklyn, and our good friend Matt Abdu is here with us this morning. Good, good to morning. See you, man. Great to see you guys as always. Thank you so much I've for having me. I've been smelling the food all morning. I know we're going to eat well when well, you're here. We're so. making one of my all-time favorite things to cook and eat the chicken cutlet. It is Ooh. super simple to do. Anyone can make it. And you ready to get started? Let's do it. All right. So first thing we're starting off with is some very thinly cut chicken breasts. You can either buy them at the grocery store already cut, or you can buy whole chicken breasts and just sort of slice them, butterfly them open. What I like to do is kind of pound them out a little bit to get them as thin as you possibly can. Okay. Standard breading procedure. Sounds fancy, but all it is is flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs. To make ours a little bit more exciting to the egg, we're going to add a little bit of chopped parsley. Can be fresh or dried. Okay. This is my secret. I love adding a little bit of Parmesan cheese nice. to the eggs. So you and do it to the egg and not to the breadcrumb. Correct. Well, you can also use seasoned breadcrumbs, too, if you want. Uh, that's certainly a great way to go. And a little bit of garlic powder. So we're just okay. going to mix all this together, scramble it up. So whisk, what's whisk, your whisk. secret? When I'm breading chicken, I get, it like, never these sticks, blobs. Right? Yes. I yeah. get these blobs so of, like, that's a very That's my a fingers. very, very important thing. So, Dylan, what I think is the most important thing, whenever you're doing these chicken cutlets at home, because lots of times the things that happen, once you go in the egg, you find that the egg sort of falls off. Yes. And then when you go to put in the breadcrumbs, you get all these bare spots. Yes. This is the trick, guys. Let the chicken, flour chicken, sit in the egg for 30 seconds so that the flour oh, absorbs the egg. Okay. Once it's fully absorbed, it's not going to fall off. Okay. And so then from there... It. From there, we're gonna go into the breadcrumbs. You're gonna really pack the breadcrumbs in nice and tight until they're perfectly coated and breaded, just as we have here. You can see how nice oh, and thin perfect. they are. We're gonna heat up a large skillet with oil. But well, what temperature is the question? Because three, I always mess that up. To 325 to 350 degrees. Now, ah. the best way of telling that is really just get a digital instrument thermometer and check the temperature of the oil so that when you put the cutlets in, they should sizzle and bubble. If it's not sizzling and bubbling, the oil's not hot enough. So we're gonna wait till <laughs> that gets a little bit hotter. Okay. And then you're gonna get these gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful. chicken cutlets. They're oh, nice that and crispy, amazing. golden brown. Finished with a little Malden salt. And they're I ready just, to munch. I, just do, I can eat these like candy. Oh, I mean, favorite. I could just snack on this. Grown up, long. mom, love you, mom. She'd make chicken cutlets for us. She'd either leave them on the countertop, you put them in the fridge, you come home, you just eat them. Like, yeah, whenever. They don't have to be warm. Late like, night snack. It's delicious. So, what do you have here? Buffalo sauce? So, one of the greatest things about chicken cutlets is you can do so many amazing things with them, right? So, what I have in here, I'm from upstate New York. I ate a lot of buffalo stuff in my growing up in my youth. <laughs> so, this is a really simple, super simple uh, buffalo sauce. It's your favorite hot sauce, a little bit of Worcestershire, a little bit of garlic, Ooh. and some butter. You just warm it all together, and we're gonna take some chicken cutlets, whether they're fresh, cold, out of the refrigerator, or the leftovers that you have. We're gonna dump all that beautiful buffalo sauce all oh, over the nice. chicken cutlets. Can't ever go wrong with that, right? We'll mix up. Give it a good old mix, and then we're gonna assemble. I love wraps. I think wraps are a great way. I've been trying to be more mindful about things I've been eating. Wraps are a better alternative to using bread. So I love these wraps. We're gonna take a big couple spoonfuls of this buffalo chicken. I mean, look how good that looks, that right? That's amazing. You can just eat this as it is. I know. Just like that, we're gonna put a couple spoonfuls of there. And to finish the wrap, I'm gonna add some chopped tomatoes, some buffalo or blue cheese, shredded lettuce, and a little bit of blue cheese dressing. Oh, and we're just awesome. gonna layer up our wrap, roll it up. Oh yeah, there you go. And so if you are uber carb conscious, Matt, so this is the finished product, this is what Correct. it looks like. That's what it looks like, just roll it up and then you're ready to dive on in and oh, give it a But awesome. you can also do this as a salad or there's a salad do, type version yes. of this? Yes, so let's just keep moving the chicken cutlet along. Why not use leftover chicken cutlets to make a delicious cob salad, yes. right? Uh, if I'm gonna eat a salad, I want the salad to be piled with all my favorite things that I love to eat in addition to it. But well, what's gonna make it special is we're gonna make this delicious Dijon shallot vinaigrette that's super okay. simple. So what's in here? In our bowl, we have a little bit of Dijon mustard, some honey, you gotta have a little bit of sweetness okay. to offset the tartness, and water. We're just gonna whisk that up, add in some sherry vinegar, some chopped okay. shallots, some fresh chopped parsley, and we're just gonna whisk in olive oil, about a, uh, probably a cup or so, okay. until this kind of comes together and make a beautiful vinaigrette. And you pour that right on the lettuce. And then that's gonna go right onto the lettuce. Okay. We're gonna give the lettuce a toss. It's already dressed with the dressing. 
That's going to go into our bowl. And what do you like putting in a cop salad? Uh, well, traditionally, it's eggs, it's bacon, it's cherry tomatoes, it's onions, it's some sort of crumbled cheese, whether that's gorgonzola or feta. Oh. And then usually there's some sort of protein on it, right? Like roasted chicken or ham or something like that. That looks amazing. I love doing the chicken cutlets. And here you go, Dilly. Thank you so much. Have a little snack to eat oh up. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to give me that one. There, here you go. That's what I should have done. That would have been a much better visual. But it's a super easy thing. You can make the chicken cutlets on Monday. Then you can have buffalo wraps the next day, cob salad the day it. after. Matt, and they're just great to snack on. Thank you Thanks, so much. Matt. We oh always love your thank food. You for and for great these to see you guys. recipes, head to today.com slash food. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, Dubai has a new underwater tourist attraction. And this is one you do not want to miss. Stay with us. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity x -Fi. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity x -Fi. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back today on Ahoda and Jenna. We take you around the world to some of the most interesting places you may have never thought to visit. Plus, we'll share the number one travel destination on our bucket lists. Take a look. Since we're taking you on a trip around the world, we thought we would do a round of travel talk. Travel talk. Okay. Okay, let's start with you. Oh, me. Okay. Why not? Okay. Most exotic place you've ever been. Exotic. Probably, I mean, it's where my family's from, Egypt. Yes. It's because it's all that history. Like, I just, when we visited the pyramids, like, you put your hands on the stones, and you feel like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe that I'm here. And, and the stones were as tall as we were as kids, so uh, we would climb them as much as they'd let did you. Did you go often? Uh, yeah, we used to go every summer. We went every single summer. That was like our summer place. So you, we didn't realize how cool it was because mm -hmm. you're a kid and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to grandma's house. So you're like, <laughs> okay. But then later you're like, oh, that was pretty cool. So I think probably that was my most exotic. That what about so for you? Cool. I, um, You've been to a lot of cool spots. I I've know. been to some cool spots, but I think the coolest is when my parents took Barbara and me when we were in college to Africa um, when, oh, when they were traveling there for work. And it was just really cool because it was a similar sort of thing where it, was, it wasn't it was really a vacation. Right. We got to go and meet with people. Um, it was when the unveiling of PEPFAR was going on, yeah. which was the president's emergency relief for AIDS in Africa. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it really opened our eyes that mm. we can do so much to change the mm -hmm. world. It was an amazing opportunity. I love that. I love that. I loved okay. it. Okay. Most memorable food you've ever tried? I once tried a grasshopper. Was it crunchy? Yeah, delicious, actually. <laughs> Crickets. Crickets. Yeah, all those Crickets things. or grasshoppers or but what was it? Probably Some one sort of, of those. Little bug. Yeah. And I thought it was delish. What yeah. about you? Um, I've, you know, I whenever I go somewhere, I try to try yes. whatever. Because I think you should try it. And most things that seem y icky like that are actually not. Kind They're of like delicious. They're like crunchy. It's like eating chips. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Your favorite thing. Yeah. Most adventurous Oh, thing. I know what yours is. What? Most adventurous thing I've done on a trip? 
When I skydo- skydove? Yes. Skydoved. <laughs> skydived. When you jumped out of that skydoved. plane, there's nothing that will ever eclipse that, I think, is the most adventurous thing you've ever yes, done in your life, right? It is. It is. Yeah. I, but also another really cool thing we did what, that what? I want to recreate. What? is that my mom, for her 60th birthday, took me with her best friends and all their daughters rafting down the <gasps> Grand Canyon. What? It was, it was a week trip. We spent the night together on a tent, my mom and I. And the first night, there was such a big storm. She had to wear goggles because they were getting the storm. Those. The sandstorm was getting in her contacts. Oh and we just had a bottle gosh. of tequila. It was what? so much fun. We hiked. We rafted. It's like that's a once-in-a-lifetime Thing. Oh my gosh! I, I wait. That's I love that. I, that's a good one to replicate. Right? I want to replicate that Let's in do my it own life. Yeah, I think that's a good one. You're All right. Like, no, thank you. No, I could. I think that'd be fun. Okay, number one destination still on your travel bucket list. What's yours? You know what? I've never been to Australia. Me neither. And I was thinking, like, how is that? Yes. I would love to go or there. Or New Zealand. I would love to Any go to Any of both. those places over there. Okay. Um, finally, favorite today takes you destination. We visited virtually the Philippines, Honduras, Bangkok, New Zealand, South Africa, and Kenya. I would I say like, New Zealand, yeah, actually. Yeah, I was, I was going to either say the Philippines or Thailand. Yeah. I don't know. I love anything that's totally different yes. than what you would ever see or feel. I you know? agree. I there's, there's something, something so eye-opening yeah. about landing in a place yes. that feels so yeah, different. Yeah, everything's different. All right. Okay. Speaking of exotic attractions, take a look at what debuted in Dubai. This was earlier this summer. You guys, this is the world's deepest pool. Oh, yeah. Wow, people can actually scuba dive, scuba in dive down in there. And when you scuba dive down in there, you can do things like go to the library, it looks like. It's 196 feet down. It's got tons of water in there. It's it's about six Olympic-sized swimming pools in all. Okay, I have to tell you that when I was little, I read a book by R.L. Stein about that. scuba diving and the dangers, and that scares me. Does it scare well, you? Well, yeah, but they said kids as young as 10 can do it. It's an underwater city. There's an arcade. Yeah, but how do they get to the arcade? I think you gotta you got to put on your gear. Oh, my gosh, that is cool. State of art lightning. I got to tell you, Dubai does all kinds of things. They're the ones who I think were the first or among the first to have, like, an indoor uh, ski slope yes. in the mall would where you, you do, rent a Would you do up. this down in there? No, I can't. Are you, I get claustrophobic snorkeling. Sometimes when I'm snorkeling, I feel like I'm hyperventilating. <laughs> And I'm, my head is, like, one inch. All I have to do is go like this, and then I'd be fine. I but. think that place isn't for us. Today is all about adventure. Over the past few months, as part of our Today Takes You series, we've been taking you along as we fly around the world to mystery locations. Such a cool series. Our producers supplied the clues, and we had to guess the destination along with you guys at home. Okay, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride, and let's find out where we're headed first. Clue number one, this country provides more nurses to the rest of the world than any other. Our second clue is this country is comprised of uh, 7,641 islands. Okay, and clue number three, from September to January, this country celebrates one of the longest Christmas Christmas seasons seasons in the world. I don't guess. I don't have a guess. I mean, Christmas season means it's cold. Greenland? Okay, well, let's see. Coming in for a landing. Where are we? The Southeast Asian country of the The Philippines. Philippines. Oh. Okay, and here to greet us is Manila resident and YouTuber Mickey Bustos. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Mabuhay, hold on, Jenna. How are you? How how do you say it? Mabuhay? Mabuhay. Yes, correct. It's our formal greeting. It means long life. What time is it there? Um, we're on the exact opposite side of the world as you guys. So <laughs> while you guys are having your morning coffee, we're getting ready for bed at this side of the world. Oh, well, we it's are currently so- uh, like 10. 10. Thank you. 10. Yeah. Up. Well, we're so excited because we can't wait to take a check of the Philippines. Take us around. Nothing ever goes to waste. Appreciate the boy. Baby, we be noy this way. I'm YouTuber Mikey Bustos. And that was my 2019 parody of Lady Gaga's Born This Way. After becoming a finalist on Canadian Idol, I moved to the Philippines where I'm known for my music parodies on Filipino culture. Cause in the Philippines uh-huh. where it is very hot. Hi Hora, hi Jenna. I'm actually riding a Kalesa. See that? We're on a horse-drawn carriage. 
I have so much to show you around my city, my home. You ready? Let's go, guys. Koda and Jenna, this here is called the Tinikling Dance. It's a Filipino cultural dance where the dancers need to coordinate their moves and jump through that clapping bamboo. And trust me guys, you don't want to get caught in there, it hurts. Lyle, I heard a rumor that you're going to teach me how to do Tinikling. Yes we are, are you ready? Uh, Koda and Jenna, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> I need to rest. <laughs> One of the greatest things I love about walking outside is there are tons of street vendors. Guya here is selling watermelons. Mmm, look at that. It's on a cold plate. It keeps it nice and cold in this little like makeshift fridge. The Philippines is comprised of 7,641 glorious islands. And my tip, explore as many as possible. Check this out. It's so beautiful. I recently experienced the natural wonders of Bohol's chocolate hills. This is so cool. The sun dries out the grass on these hills and that's what gives it the chocolate color. We are here at the Tarshur Sanctuary. For those of you who don't know what a Tarshur is, a Tarshur is a type of primate. It's not a monkey. Bohol is very famous for the iconic Tarshurs that live here. It says here, Tarshurs are resting. Please observe silence. Oh my god, oh my gosh, it's looking at me. Oh my gosh, okay, I see it. Hold on, look. Isn't he cute? It's like this big. So they like sleep during the day. They're nocturnal, they wake up at night, and then they eat bugs. Okay, we'll leave it alone now. Bye, fella. On the island of Boracay, you'll cherish its white sandy beaches and magnificent sunsets. Wow, wow, wow. In 2019, our visit to the Palawan Islands left us stunned. They're like giant rock castles. Look at how big that is. That is massive. Beautiful crystal blue turquoise water. What do you guys think? Check out that view, guys. Everyone comes here to this area to take the iconic Instagram photo. It's very signature for Koron. And now, it's time to eat. Kaina, as they say in the Philippines. Hoda and Jenna, I am here at Sorsa Restaurant with my good friend, Chef JP. Hey guys, so this is a pancit canton, our version of a stir-fried noodles, grilled chicken in a sal, marinated in coconut vinegar, lemongrass, lumpia Shanghai, our Filipino version of a spring roll, and then we always have it with vinegar. Mmm, that crunch fills my soul. Let's try the chicken. Hora, Jenna, eat through the screen. Eat through the screen. Take a bite. You can't visit the Philippines without trying our famous Filipino dessert known as Halo Halo. Every bite is a different surprise. Halo Halo has so many ingredients, you wouldn't believe it. It's like you're playing the lottery, but you win every time. <laughs> Honestly, the best. <laughs> oh, oh that gosh. was awesome! That was the best tour! Awesome, you enjoyed that? We loved it, we awesome, loved it. Awesome, great, I had and, so much fun. And I know a lot of folks may not know, but most people in the Philippines actually speak English if you're planning on going on a, on a vacation. That's correct, so if you're an English speaker, you'll get around just fine here. Well, you it were is amazing, beautiful. boy. You just turned us on, that's it, our next stop. You're coming to visit, and you are the best tour guide. The we're best, the best, the best. Today Talks continues after the break. Kate, the chemist, is here and turning our plaza into a science fair with some fun back-to-school experiments. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. With Xfinity X5. 
Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. When our next guest is with us, we know we are going to have some fun. That's right. Kate the Chemist has a doctorate in inorganic chemistry. She's also a professor of chemistry at UT Austin. Way what? smarter than all of us combined. She's also an accomplished author. She's now celebrating the release of a new chapter book called It's Elemental. And Kate joins us now with some fun science experiments for us to try. Remember, kids, not all of these are safe to do at home. I'm talking to Noah Soberoff. <laughs> and we will let you know when you can follow along. Kate, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Congratulations on the book. Tell us a little bit about the book. And I heard there's a special dedication in this book. Yeah, so I dedicated the book to my high school chemistry teacher because she made me fall in love with chemistry. And so with this book, I'm trying to get everybody else to fall in love with chemistry. <laughs> but in the book, basically, I take you through the busiest day of your life. So I, and I point out my favorite parts of science. So from breakfast to an early morning workout, we go to the bar, we go to the beach. We even talk That's about the smart. science of date night. Um, so it's, it's a really fun book, and I hope you guys like it. One thing in the book is about coffee. You know, we drink it to wake up in the morning, but actually coffee is not what wakes you up. Yeah, isn't that weird? So the molecule is called trimethylxanthine, and what it does is it goes it is, in. I know, right? You knew that. He knew it. <laughs> um, but it goes in and it binds with your brain, and it blocks another molecule from making you feel sleepy or drowsy. So it doesn't oh. actually give you energy. It just blocks another molecule. It's a, it's a bouncer. Energy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Our favorite part of Kate the Chemist's visits or the experiment, so let's get to it. You say, you claim that we can make a, a raw egg bounce? I can, yeah, you can. So what we're gonna do here, do you wanna do it, Dylan, or sure. I can do it? Okay, so here you have some raw eggs. What okay. you're gonna do is cover it with acid. So go ahead and dump it this over. Acid. It's vinegar, but we can call it okay. acid. Um, so vinegar has acetic it acid in there. It. You can smell it, right? Yes. So you can do this one at home. You can, yeah. Okay. I actually did this one in Texas and tried to fly them across the country, so and they exploded actually, yeah, in my suitcase. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so oh. we're not using the ones I brought. Anyway, so these here, are the ones that we've soaked about in 72 hours in the vinegar. And okay. so what you can do you is just go add ahead. food digest yeah, for fun. Yeah, just add food okay. just make fun. Of course. Oh, maybe you need it to be open. Pop it a little squeeze. That's all right. Whatever. You understand the process. I'll work yeah. on this. Perfect. Oh, there you go. Nailed it. All right, so then what happens is the vinegar essentially eats the outside of the eggshell. So the eggshell is made of calcium carbonate, so it's like chalk. Yeah, you can touch okay, it. Good. And so go ahead and grab the egg. And then really, really oh. lightly, what you're oh. going to be able to do is actually let it bounce, but keep it low, because if you take it too high, it'll oh actually bring up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that <laughs> oh, that's, is cool. I mean, that's that's fun. Well. That's cool. As well. see your oh, that's I'm a, a really troublemaker. Good one. Try it. Oh. I would enjoy that. <laughs> My kids would enjoy it. Oh, that's just it. really fun. It is so fun. It's so <laughs> oh. 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 I would throw it at Craig, but he's got important work to do <laughs> later you. today. Thank you. How did you throw that? So that was fun. That's a cool one. That's fun. That's a fun experiment. Yeah, 24 hours, soak in vinegar, and then you got a fun experiment the next day. So, Kate, the next one's called Dragon's Breath, which is what my wife accuses me of having when I wake up in the morning. Oh, no. Um, but what is this? So what you need is a little bit of liquid nitrogen, which I'm sure you all have at home, Yes, right? I have a container just like of that. Of course, yes. Um, and so what we do is we use liquid nitrogen, and then we're going to just throw some mini marshmallows in there. Okay. And so what we're going to do is it's called dragon's breath because after they've been soaking in the nitrogen for, I don't know, about two minutes or so, you can pick them up. Don't do this at home. Oh. Oh, oh. 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 oh that's so fun. It's dragon's breath. <laughs> Can is we that, try that? Is that hot? Yeah, I just yeah. put this you in my mouth. Are you okay? Here's another yeah. one. I'm going to let you do it. That'll be cold. Let it sink out. It's going to be cold. So Real fast. Really, really cold. Right? Real fast. Go. Do it. Yeah. One, two. Now breathe out. Oh, you did it. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, journalism. So, journalism. Killed it. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Best driving I'm going to eat this one right here. Perfect. Um, so the, the last one, I'm going to step out. I'm going to bring in our producer, Brandon, who set all this up anyway. Yay, Brandon. Um, because there's a big explosion about to happen here on the plaza. Yes, we're going to do a rainbow explosion. So what we need are some cryogenic gloves. Jacob, you're going to help me, right? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so we've got our cryo gloves. Say, Kate? Need go. some goggles. I'll come all the way over here if you guys want to follow oh, me. Okay. Why is Craig Coming. sending this one out? He's I don't know. I told you, he's got important things to do later today. Oh. <laughs> 
And so here, I do you want to be on this one? Sure. Okay, so what we have here in our first bucket okay. is hot water. It's about 80 degrees Celsius, and then we've spiked it with some food coloring and some dish soap, okay? In the bucket in front of it, we have liquid nitrogen. Okay. So what we're gonna do is take this bucket and dump it into this bucket, and we're gonna see if we can make a rainbow explosion, okay? okay. Brandon, you, you ready? Have, good. I'm you ready. ready? Okay. So you have orange, I've got green, you've got blue. Are we, are we gonna count down or what? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna hold mine like this. Yeah. And then we're gonna throw it in. Remember, keep your head back so it doesn't shoot you in the face. Okay. Do not do this at home, by the do way. Do not do this at home. Do Thank you, Craig. Home. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's count together. Three, two, two one. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Wow. Oh, it is cold. Oh, that wow. Is cold. <laughs> Kate, that was terrific. We did it. Thank you so much. Everybody, give it up for Michael, thanks for doing this. Good to see you, man. All right, you as well. Thanks for having me. We could spend most of this interview talking about New Jersey high school football, I think, but maybe we'll save that for a different time and focus on the save movie. Save that for an <laughs> another time. We can save that for another time, man. <laughs> so let's talk about Without Remorse. I told you I just watched it today, and man, it comes out and grabs you from the word go and doesn't let go for the next couple of hours. Um, what does it feel like to be on the, the eve of this movie coming out that you've poured so much into? I, I'm excited. You know, honestly, uh, you know, uh, we finished shooting this movie right before the pandemic hit. So to go through post and edit, and, you know, and really, you know, put this movie together um, and not really sure where exactly, you know, when it was going to come out. So now that things are loosening back up and, uh, you know, getting ready to, you know, drop it on, you know, on Amazon Prime. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about this one, man. So let's give people a little bit of the backstory without giving too much away about who John Kelly yeah. is. It's based off the Tom Clancy book, which right away people lean in and they want to see it. But this is sort of the origin character, origin story of a character they may not know as well. Yeah, John Kelly. So this is like, you know, arguably, you know, his, you know, second probably most famous character that 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 he's um you know created you know in his novels um and i've always been a fan of the tom clancy universe you know growing up playing rainbow six video games and really you know envisioning myself throughout these missions so when i had an opportunity to really like give uh you know john kelly a, a you know a fresh take and modernize the story you know that that kind of is more reflective of the world that I, that i live in today you know i just jumped at the opportunity um he kind of you know he goes through a personal tragedy you know, he's a you know, Navy SEAL, you know, he's a, a really loyal guy, you know, he believes in um, everything that he does. Um, and, and when he uh, gets wronged, you know, he, he wants some answers, you know, and, and this movie kind of takes place uh, of, of John looking for those answers, uh, no matter where they are. The video game part of this is crazy to me because you literally are living out the fantasy of every kid. You grow up playing a video game and now you get to go live it out. Exactly. And, that, and that's one of the things, you know, I, I mean, I love my job, man. And I love being able to, um, you know, to, to, you know, do my own stunts. You know, I mean, as a kid in the living room, when you're taking the couch cushions and, you know, you're, you know, you're jumping off of them and, you know, pretending, you know, playing make believe of whatever it is. Uh, these are the type of movies that I watched growing up. And so I finally be able to get into a place where I could do my own stunts and I can train for, um, you know, underwater sequences and, you know, and burning cars and, you know, tactical training and explosions and all that good stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. You've called this the ideal movie for you, that when you saw this, you were like, I need to do this. Why do you say that exactly? Uh, because I'm, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, looking up to, you know, you know, movie stars and action, action heroes like, you know, Tom Cruise and, um, Michael Jai White, you know, Wesley Snipes, Jackie Chan, you know, these guys, they always put the work into it, you know, they, they study, they train, um, so they could, you know, be put in a position to actually do the stunts themselves. And I always wanted to do that, you know, I always wanted a, a vehicle or a movie that would allow me to actually do my own stuff. So, you know, for this one, I had a great stunt team, you know, we were very safe, uh, put a lot of time into. Uh, working out and training and getting prepared so they felt comfortable enough put me in those positions. So when you say you're doing your own stunts and you do in this movie, when I watch you walk up to a burning car, casually open the door and get in, <laughs> or plunge into a river, let's say, and hold your breath yeah. underwater for a while, that's you? That's Michael B. Jordan? 
Yeah, that's me, man. That's, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I have a, like my stunt double, Clay, you know, goes through things, makes sure everything's safe, you know, works out all the kinks, makes sure, you know, everything is, is awesome uh, and safe as, safe as can be. But no, man, like, you know, doing military, you know, you know, diving, you know, and, and, you know, going to dive tanks and, you know, spending hours and hours and hours under there becoming comfortable. Um, uh, the burning car is like, it's not too much you could really do to train for that. You know, I, I think that's the one I, I thought about the least. I was like, all right, cool. I gotta do what? Okay, cool. Let's do it. Don't think about it. You know, the, you know, you put some, you know, flame retardant gel on you to make sure, you know, you can stay as cool as possible for as long as possible. But you still might walk away with a few less eyebrows and eyelashes. <laughs> as, uh, it, it gets pretty hot getting in out of the car. Is there anybody in your life or on set saying, hey, you're one of the biggest movie stars in the world. We don't need you walking into a burning car right now. I mean, I, I all the producers, I think everybody was, was saying that, you know, <laughs> had my mom on speed dial, you know, so I think it was one of those things where uh, I, I definitely had to persuade them at certain moments to, to, to let me do the things that they were like, ah, oh, you don't have to. I'm like, no, 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 I want to, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's figure it out. So uh, yeah, it was fun. You've said before that your mom gets tired of watching you die in movies over the course of your career, so she didn't want to see it in this one. Yeah, this one gave her a lot of anxiety, but um, but but it, it wasn't as nerve wracking, I'm sure, as some of the other characters that I played that uh, didn't make it out. You know, so so you know, as you get older, and, you know, you start to, you know, mature and have other roles that that you want to see them, you know, make it to the you know to the end of the credits. You know, so it's uh. It's, it, it was good. Speaking of the end of the credits, there's a moment after the credits mm -hmm. that leads me to believe this may be the beginning of something for you. Is that fair to say in this series? Yeah, yeah that's fair to say. I mean, I think we want to, you know, definitely stick around after the, uh, after the credits. Um, but yeah, I think we're, you know, you know, we're alluding to the fact that we think we created a world that was, you know, interesting and cool and fun. And uh, we want to see where, you know, John Clark goes from here, you know, and uh, I don't think he's done yet, you know, mm. so he, he has a lot more to do. And I'm really interested to see where he goes. Is it cool for you, Michael, to have reached the point in your career where you can live out some of these fantasies to have grown up watching Matt Damon be Jason Bourne or Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or all the stars you mentioned? And now there you are standing as the guy that some kid watching movies growing up is going to say, I want to be Michael B. Jordan in those movies. No, that's cool, man. That's, uh, that's, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it's safe to say that's something that, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm hopeful of, you know, and I want to continue to do movies like this. Um, to continue to continue to inspire, you know, I think representation is extremely important, you know, so to be able to, you know, do a, a wide, uh, you know, range of movies in different genres. And this is like my first one in this space. So to be able to, um, to be able to, you know, to do this type of movie is, 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 is exciting for me and it hopefully inspires uh, a lot of kids too. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. you accept that criticism? 
There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Yeah, people may not realize that you're a producer of the movie, Outlier Society, your production company, which has become this sort of force in Hollywood. Talk a little, if you can, Michael, about why you established that, what you wanted to accomplish with that, and how it's grown now to back these major projects like Remorse. Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, you know, starting my own production company kind of sparked from um, my time on Friday Night Lights and Parenthood, you know, being around, you know, Peter Berg, you know, Sarah Arbery, you know, and uh, Jason Kadem and, and kind of, you know, Pete, Pete was like, you know, one day you're going to get tired of like uh, waiting for the phone to call. You know, you just got to gotta start owning things and creating your own IP and, and uh, ownership, ownership, ownership. And I was like, you know, and at that at young age, I just started, you know, thinking about creating things, you know, creating opportunities for others. You know, I've been extremely blessed to have a, you know, a fruitful career thus far. And I want to, um, you know, you got to pay that forward, you know. Um, so to be able to like create, have a production company who, you um, you know, can shine a light on stories that maybe normally wouldn't wouldn't get told, you know, and also, uh, you know, normalize, you know, um, you know, films and filmmakers and building around talent that um, that maybe wouldn't have gotten a shot or opportunity. You know, I want to be the, the tip, of, tip of the spear in that type of way and, and uh, create those opportunities for them. And you put riders in the deals where you have to have a certain level of inclusivity in terms of who works on the movie, which is an amazing piece of leverage that a handful of stars, I would think, could bring to a, a project. Yeah, the inclusion writer, you know, was inspired by Francis, Francis McDormand, you know, um, a few years ago during her famous, uh, you know, Ox, o Oscar speech. And I was, you know, in the audience and I heard, and I was like, oh man, okay, there's something, you know, in writing that, that we can actually, you know, put into play. I was like, okay, cool. So, and that was something that, you know, we, we you know, my team started to, build upon and um, and we made that, you know, part of our, you know, our company policy. And that's something that, you know, just kind of, you know, tries to, you know, raise the accountability, you know, of um, of our partners with Outlier Society. And, um, and and it's and it's been very successful. It's been adopted uh, on every project thus far uh, since, since we put that in place. And uh, we'll continue to do so moving forward. So it's, um, yeah, it's definitely something I'm proud of. And, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. A long way to go, a lot of work to do, but but I think if we continue to lead by example um, and, you know, one step, one foot in front of the other, you know, when it's all said and done, we'll look up and be like, okay, you know, we did something. Good for you for using your position for, for good that way. It's, it's funny to hear you talk about the people you looked up to growing up, and I'm thinking back to your youth your childhood in Newark, New Jersey, and how you got from where you were in Newark to modeling and acting. What was yeah. the what was the leap for you? How did that young kid at 11 years old hop into modeling? And eventually that was sort of the road to show business. Uh, it was my mom, you know? My mom really uh, got me into it. She, uh, you know, randomly, uh, you know, at a doctor's appointment, the receptionist had two little boys who were, you know, you know, were in the industry, you know, uh, that were, were models at the time. And was like, you know, you should bring your, you know, your sons with you too, you know, with, with, with me and, you know, crash this audition. I crashed this audition and ended up booking it. Got in trouble because I didn't have any <laughs> representation or whatever the case is. And then, uh, and, and honestly, you know, the rest was history, you know. Um, had a backstage newspaper down at Penn Station, randomly looked up a manager that had took out an ad, you know, for open calls, went in, auditioned. She signed me that day and we were going out on, uh, you know, go sees and auditions and stuff at you know, 10, 11, 12. And then it just one, you know, one small success to another, one step, you know, one stepping stone to, to another one. I just kind of just kept going. Sometimes you just got to like walk your path, you know, you don't really know where it's going to end up. And then you start to learn and you get to another level and you, you assess and you learn and you build and your confidence and you continue to grow and you just figure it out. And it's just kind of always been like following my gut, and my intuition. But, I, you know, I credit my mom for sure uh, of getting me started and pushing me where I am. Was that even on your radar, though, Michael, as a kid? I know you love sports. You're a good athlete. Was that something that you thought of like, oh, maybe someday I'll try actor? Or was it just that out of the blue? Out of the blue. No, it was no, it was no thought at all. Honestly, I was uh, enjoying, you know, sports and, and just hanging out with my friends and, you know, 
just living. You know, you're a kid at that point. You know, I mean, I guess some some kids know exactly what they want to do at a young age, but I always loved, you know, um, you know, animation and movies and television shows. You know, I was always inter entertained by that. So um, it was just, I guess, it's a natural evolution. your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Most people point to your performance on The Wire as sort of the breakthrough, playing Wallace. How big of that, how big a deal was that in your life, in your career? Did that give you the taste of, okay, I think I can do this for a living? Yeah, that was, uh, that was when I really fell in love with acting. That's when I was around, you know, um, a lot of veteran actors that, you know, like, you know, Idris Elba, you know, Dominic West, uh, J.D. Williams, Andre Royal, like those guys really, um, sat me down and had conversations with me on set and it was like hey you can you can this could be a career for you you know if you continue to you know if you if, you, if you're serious about it and you, you really you really keep uh working at it and uh that was when i first started to like you know really look at it differently than just oh i'm getting out of school and i could you know and i'm and i'm uh you know you know like oh just you know yeah i just looked at it more as a business that type of way and then from then uh, falling in love with acting, you know, um, just was my thing. And then a crazy connection on All My Children where you actually replaced Chadwick Boseman, who had become one of your great friends. What was that experience like on All My Children? Yeah, I mean, that's where the work ethic kicked in. You know, we would do so many episodes a week, you know, and um, just like we were just like, you know, we would crank them out. It, it was a lot. Uh, you know, you just always had to be prepared. So I think that's where I really got my acting school. You know, I think that was when I really kind of started to uh, uh, get my reps in, you know, I guess, as an actor. And, then, you know, in hindsight, you know, I was, you know, with Chadwick of it all, when we first kind of, you know, uh, first first met. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's wild. It's wild. Yeah, I mean, when you think about what came for you guys later with one of the biggest movies in the history of Hollywood and Black Panther, to build that relationship coming off of All My Children, it's got to be crazy. What did he mean to you as a friend? No, I mean, you know, he's a he's a special person, you know, and it's you know, it's a, it's a it's a tragic loss, you know, for all of us, you know, for me, um, you know, uh, our community, you know, um, yeah, it's it's uh, we're still dealing with it. You know, I think we're still processing. You know, I think it comes in waves, but 
you know, his legacy that he left behind, the, um, the impact that he's made on so many, you know, people around the world, you know, his family, um, he lives forever, you know? Um, you know, he, he has an incredible body of work to be able to, you know, that we can reminisce and, you know, and get a chance to, uh, you know, see pieces of him, but but he but he's uh, he's still with us. You know what I mean? His his uh, he, he's he's still around. So you, he motivates and inspires me. So it's it's cool. Were you guys? I interviewed Chadwick right in the middle of Black Panther mania. I think you guys had just come back from South Korea or something. And he just plopped down across and was like, oh, just on this whirlwind as the movie was catching fire. Could you guys believe in that moment? Not just how big it was at the box office, but what a cultural force it had become around the world. I mean, I think we were at that point. We were constantly taking it in from city to city, from country to country, you know, really like, wow, okay, this is the reaction that we're getting from people. You know, this, the kids, the, um, you know, it's really all about the, the children and the kids, man, to see those look, the looks on their faces, um, you know, of admiration and just, you know, and, and, you know, and just happiness and, oh, wow, like just to know that type of impact we're making um, was, uh, was really special. You know, a time in my life I'll never forget. So it was, it was a lot of fun. For what it's worth, my kids still say your line when you took the mask from the museum, you said, nah, I'm just feeling it. I just want this <laughs> They still drop that around the house. <laughs> oh, man, that's cool. See, stuff like that is cool, man. That's, that's, uh, that's what it's all about. They just drop it in. Um, am I right in, in reading your story, Michael, that before Friday Night Lights, when you'd gone out to L.A., it was a bit of a struggle for you, even with the success of The Wire and the other things you'd done, that you were wondering whether or not maybe this was the right thing and you even considered going back home to Jersey? Yeah, you know, nothing's guaranteed, right? So I, even with the successes of, you know, The Wire and, you know, All My Children and all that good stuff, you know, there's a lot of talented actors out there. You know, there's a lot of that, that, does, that don't, you know, for whatever reason, kind of make it over that hump, you know? Um, and that show, The Wire, kind of... In real time, it wasn't as popular as it was after right. the show was over. So, you know, doors started opening up. The right people were watching the shows that I was doing, you know. So slowly, uh, things started to catch on. But at first, when I got out here, you know, it's, you know, life of an actor. You know, you're trying to, you know, you try to put a string of jobs together where you can, like, you know, survive and stay out here long enough until you can actually figure out what your career is going to be or what projects you can actually, um, you know, uh, live off of, you know, so I think, you know, in the beginning, you know, I just knew there was a, I had a threshold, there's a moment, right? <laughs> but it's so crazy, like, you know, they say, like, right when you get ready to quit, you know, that's the moment. If you just keep going a little bit further, you would, you would have, you would have made it, you know? So it's a little bit of that, you know, you have that doubt for whatever reason, you just continue to push through and, you know, you know, and here I am. So it's, uh, Obviously, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, not everybody who does well on a TV show keeps pushing, though. You know, sometimes that's the moment in time and that's the thing they did. But you kept going with Fruitvale and with Creed and all these films. At what point did you feel like you were a movie actor, really? Because you had success in television. When did you feel like, OK, now this is my thing. I'm in movies. You know, Fruitvale for me was the first time that, I, you know, that answered a lot of questions and as far as like carrying a film, you know, in a movie. Um, but, you know, I still, you know, you know, it's, it's a, I'm a real chill guy, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I gotta, you know, I gotta re remind myself, you know what I'm saying? Of, uh, you know, the, the blessings and accomplish that, accomplishments that I've had thus far that, uh, but yeah, it's a, I don't believe my own hype. I don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just, I just I just do the work, man, and try to tell honest stories, and I'm and I'm happy that you know I'm able to make an impact on people, and that people enjoy watching my work, you know, and uh, I continue to kind of have that attitude and point of view on it, you know. And part of that progression now is you're going to direct Creed Three, which is amazing. Your directorial debut. I know you're being directed as we speak by Denzel Washington. Is he giving you any pointers on how to do this? Yeah, everybody is, man. I'm 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 uh, I'll be a fool not to listen to you know. <laughs> You know, like the greats, you know, and, and Denzel has so many gems and wisdoms to to, to, to give. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to telling the story and finally stepping behind the camera. Uh, I feel like I've been uh, in my head secretly, you know, observing from that from that type of uh, perspective for a long time and, you know, waiting for the right thing or the right opportunity. 
you know, the right story to be able to tell. And I, I can't think of a better one than, than, uh, than Adonis and Creed. So I'm really, I'm really excited about this. Is that going to be a tough thing to do where you've got to see 360 degrees of the film and then all of a sudden you got to grease up and get, can get in the ring? <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be div I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be challenging. You know what I mean? It's, 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 that's just what it is. Uh, but I look forward to it. You know, um, it, it's something that, you know, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I don't think you're never fully ready for it, but I'm a, I'm a jump in the deep end type of guy. So, you know, here we go. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. You, it's funny to hear you say you are a chill guy and you don't get swept up in all the things that have come your way. So how do you react when something like people's sexiest man alive comes to you? I just smile, you? man. Hey, look, just <laughs> smile and enjoy it. Trust me, I got enough people around me, my friends and family, who give me enough <laughs> that, you know what I mean? It's, 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 you know, they, 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 keep me, they, keep me, they keep me pretty grounded and humble. But it's, it's, it's all fun. You know, it's a big target. Imagine all the group chats and all your closest oh. friends. And everything that you do is because the sexiest way to live. It's like, yeah, okay, it's annoying after a while. But I imagine, imagine on one hand, it's an honor. On the other hand, you go, oh, I'm going to hear from everybody. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, my, my mom and my aunties, you know, and all my, you know, all my, like, you know, all the women in my family, it's, 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 it's gold. You know, everybody <laughs> else, it's a target. You, it does seem to me, though, over the last few years, you've become more comfortable with the, the celebrity thing. Is that fair to say you've been more open with your private life and you're in love right now and you've been very open about that? Are you is it easier for you to kind of let that wall down a little bit? You mean, I mean, I think, you know, just understand the industry and all the, the things that come along with it. You know, it's all it's it's not all glitter and gold. And um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a transition. You know, but still very private, you know, still, you know, keep a lot of, you know, stuff to myself, you know, but there's certain areas of my life that, you know, I chose to, to, to put out there uh, more of a way to be like, all right, it's there. Now, it's, now we go and move on, right? And just continue to like, yeah, like we can, we can move on. Like it doesn't have to be the, 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 the private eye trying to dig and find out what's the, every little thing. So. Um, but yeah, I'm happy, man. And, and it's, uh, and I, and I, and I probably always will, you know, keep, keep that part of my life, you know what I'm saying to myself, but, but it's, uh, you know, nobody's hiding anything. Well, that's interesting that you say that because a lot of people notice that with Lori, you've kind of gone on Instagram and it sounds like it's a bit of a strategy to demystify it. No, not a strategy, man. It's just more or less like, this is what it is. And all right, let's keep it moving. Like it's, it's, uh, that's that, I mean, that's really it, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, the film appreciate Without it. Remorse is incredible. We didn't get around to the rivalry with Behringer in Newark, but we're, we'll hit that next time. We'll, we'll get that on the next one. All right. Michael, thanks for the time. Congrats. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. All right. See you. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever all played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You got to have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. 
Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I then? will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Hey, Today, All Day, if you can't live without coffee, trust us, you're not alone. But up next on Saucy, Anthony Contrino is sharing his favorite ways to use espresso with Four recipes that will get you buzzing, including a show-stopping tiramisu and an espresso martini with a twist. Italians love their coffee, and I am no exception. Whenever I'm in Italy, my first stop every day is to a coffee bar. In the mornings, it's for a cappuccino, and then later on in the day, a shakerato. And of course, I love coffee-flavored desserts. First, I'm going to show you how to make the perfect pot of espresso using a mocha pot. Then we'll shake up my favorite coffee beverage, a shakerato. For dessert, an Italian's favorite pick-me-up, tiramisu. And then a delicious cocktail that you can't live without, an espresso martini. So if you love coffee as much as I do, come along and let's get buzzed. A mocha pot is a stove top coffee maker that you will find in pretty much every Italian household. And it's quite easy to use. This comes in this hourglass shape and all you need is some espresso and some hot water, which I already have in the bottom half of my pot. Then you wanna take your coffee filter and I'm using coffee that's ground for espresso. There are different types of grinds out there. So make sure it says espresso grind, and then slide it right into the bottom half of your mocha pot. All that's left to do is screw on the top half. You wanna get a tight seal to trap the steam in. Once you put it on the heat, the water is gonna boil and the pressure is gonna push it through those grinds into the upper cavity. Okay, I'm gonna put this on medium heat. That's all there is to it. This is gonna take about eight minutes, so I think I'm gonna start making some lunch. Nothing beats a good sandwich for lunch, and today I'm gonna to be making one of my favorites, a mortadella and provolone panino. It's sort of like a bougie bologna and cheese sandwich. Now, this sandwich is delicious because of two components, and one of those is a garlic butter. This garlic butter is quite simple to make, Four tablespoons of softened butter. You know me, I always need to use a bougie butter. A dollar for every time I say the word bougie today. And then garlic, but two ways. First, just a little bit of fresh garlic. Fresh garlic is so pungent and just kind of hits you right away with that garlicky flavor. But then I also like to add just a pinch of garlic powder. It's a little bit more well-rounded and it hits you a little after the fact. So that garlic flavor is there with every bite. Just kind of stir it and mash it all together. Set this aside now that it's nice and well combined. Next, the other thing that really adds a little extra something special to this panino is an artichoke spread. It adds this creaminess, this freshness to the sandwich that I think you're really gonna enjoy. It all starts with just a can of artichoke hearts. I've drained it, and now I'm going to rip off the leaves. I just want the creamy heart for this recipe. Mm -hmm. 
and the last one right into our mini chopper. Now just for the last few ingredients. Instead of salt, I'm using pecorino. It's gonna melt into our sandwich and it's also going to season it. It's nice and salty and if you haven't heard me say it a hundred times, it's one of my favorite cheeses. So a tablespoon of that and then three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And last but not least, just a couple of cracks of black pepper. Put on your lid, give it a couple of pulses. We're just looking for a nice spreadable consistency. This looks great and it smells delicious. Now all that's left to do is to put everything all together. So I'm using some sliced bread. This is the kind of bread that my grandmother used to have for us growing up. You'd find it in most bakeries, just a good boule, Italian boule. So first we take our garlic butter and spread a nice thin layer onto one side of the bread. Make sure you get every crevice, every nook and cranny of this bread. And same thing. Now, flip one of the pieces upside down so that the butter is on the bottom. When we put this in, the butter will be on the outsides of the sandwich, and it's kind of gonna be like inside out garlic bread. Up next are artichoke tapenade. Just enough to cover our bread. Tastes better on the sandwich than it does on the board, I'll tell you that much. Okay, next up, mortadella. Mortadella is one of my favorite cold cuts, as we would say here. It's fatty, it's so flavorful. This one has gorgeous specks of pistachio in it. And it's just so delicious. I like to pile it on. Sandwich is all about the fillings. I think I'll do one more piece just, because why not, right? and then some provolone. This cheese will melt nicely, and it's just gonna provide a nice, sharp flavor to the sandwich. Cover it up, butter side on top, and it's ready for our panini press. You can hear that sizzling already. We're gonna cook this low and slow, about three to five minutes until it's nice and golden brown. I can hear the butter kind of sizzling. Can you hear it? I think it's done. Oh, yes, it is. Carefully slide it to the board. Look at the cheese. Oh, crispy where it hit the griddle. Now that this panino is ready, all that's missing is a perfect beverage to serve alongside it. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite coffee beverage, a shakerato. It is not very popular here, but I think you'll love it. I usually drink coffee with a lot of milk or creamer in it, and this has none of that, but it doesn't need it. It's so delicious. I'm gonna take a shaker, I'm gonna fill it generously with ice. No need for bougie ice here. Then our Demerara sugar. It's an unrefined sugar and it's relatively coarse. Then our freshly brewed espresso. Two shots, right on top. And then covered up. I like to cheat because I'm nervous. Don't want to be wearing it. Wrap it in a towel and now just shake, shake, shake vigorously at least 20 to 30 seconds until you feel like you're gonna die. Don't give up. Okay, my arms hurt. See, saved myself from wearing that. While you might not need bougie ice, this drink calls for a bougie glass. 
and shake it out. The sugar creates this foam. Keep going. We want all that coffee and all of this beautiful, slightly sweet foam. And that's all there is to it. I can't wait to dig in. Mm. This drink is so simple, but so perfect. It's just a marriage made in heaven. Can't get enough of it. Now this truly is the perfect lunch. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Where you go? Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus comes back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Tiramisu is the quintessential coffee-flavored Italian dessert. And it's the perfect balance of coffee-soaked ladyfinger biscuits, savoyardi, and a delicious, decadent mascarpone cream. The first thing we need to do is work on our coffee silk. I reserved the rest of the coffee from this afternoon's mocha pot, and I brewed another one. We need two cups of our espresso. So a quarter cup of sugar is going to go into this, along with a half a teaspoon of vanilla, just for a little extra flavor. That's all that we need for our silk. Whisk it up to dissolve all that sugar. Perfect. We'll let this cool now while we work on the remaining components of our tiramisu. Now I'm going to make the mascarpone cream. This is my favorite part of a tiramisu. It is so tasty. I honestly could sit there with a spoon and just eat the cream as is. But I'm gonna be nice enough and show you how to make the tiramisu from start to finish. We need eggs, both the yolks and some of the whites. I need four of the whites and six yolks. Super important that you don't get any yolk or fat into your whites or they're not going to whip up later. First, we're gonna start with our egg yolks. And I'm making what's called in the French pastry kitchen, a pat a bomb, which is simply egg yolks, some sugar and flavoring. My flavoring of choice for this is a dry Marsala wine, not sweet, we have enough sweetness going on with all the sugar that we're adding and our Savoyardi biscuits. Going to add two tablespoons of this. Then some sugar. We'll add a quarter of a cup to this. Some salt. Half a teaspoon of that. 
and we'll throw a half a teaspoon of vanilla in as well. When baking, I like to add like flavors to separate components to kind of tie them all together. Now, grab a whisk, give this a quick initial stir just to combine everything. And then I set up a double boiler situation where I have an inch of simmering, barely simmering water. And we're going to place this on top and whisk away to slowly begin to thicken this mixture, cook the eggs the slightest bit, and to dissolve the sugar. Carefully nestle this right on top. The bottom of your bowl should not be touching the water. And then just whisk away until it begins to thicken. It will lighten in color. You can see the texture starting to change already. It's thickening slightly. It's a beautiful, silky texture. You can really smell that masala coming out of this. You can see how much this is lightened in just a couple of minutes. I don't feel any granules of sugar, which means that it's ready to go. You wanna transfer this straight to a stand mixer. I have it fitted with the whisk attachment. And now over medium, medium high. Let it go until it cools down. It will be cool to the touch and this will thicken up even more. Perfect. It's no longer warm. It's pretty much room temp. And you can see how it's thickened and we're getting these beautiful ribbons. Thank goodness for this machine because I can't even imagine how hard it would be to do this by hand. Up next, one of our star ingredients, mascarpone cheese. It's basically the Italian version of cream cheese. It's the best way to describe it. And I'm using a full 16 ounce container and just add that right into our yolk mixture. Get that all in there. Okay, put that back on. And you wanna mix this just until it's combined. If you over whip it, you can break this batter. This looks delicious already. Set this aside and onto our whites. So we have our four reserved egg whites and to that, a final quarter cup of sugar. Add that in, start with a clean, fresh whisk attachment. Once you see it's starting to form ribbons just like this, you can bump it up a notch. That's perfect. We're not looking for super stiff peaks here, just soft to medium peaks. We're nearly there. All that's left to do is to combine our two egg mixtures and we have our mascarpone cream all ready for assembly. Add about a third of your whites and gently fold slash stir it in. This is to soften the yolk mixture to make it easier to fold in the remaining whites. These egg whites are going to lighten the overall mascarpone cream and just give it this beautiful, airy, moussey consistency. Be very gentle, folding it over so that you don't deflate those egg whites. This looks great. Now that we have our two main components, our coffee soak and our mascarpone cream ready to go, I'm gonna do a little tidying up to make some room for the fun part, the assembly.
grab yourself a casserole dish. I'm using a seven by 11, but a nine by 13 will work for this recipe. You'll just need a few extra lady fingers, but you'll have plenty of coffee and plenty of cream. Grab your Savoyardi or lady fingers. They're super crispy and feel hard, but they are made for things like this. They're going to just absorb that coffee instantly and get nice and soft and give us the best mouthfeel when we bite into our tiramisu. The trick is to be quick. If you leave it in the coffee too long, it's gonna absorb too much of it and disintegrate and lose its wonderful texture. So one at a time, boom, it's all it needs. And then start lining your casserole dish. The first ones have already begun to soften where I can kind of squish them down. Let's see if I can add one more savayaki. Perfecto. Now that our bottom layer of cookies are in, it's time for the layer of mascarpone cream. Scoop half of this cream right on top. That looks about right. Then with your offset spatula, gently caress it over our cookies, evenly spreading it from corner to corner. Okay, that looks great. Now for another layer of our Saviardi. At this point, you don't have to, but I just can't help myself. I'm gonna just put a little zigzag pattern on top just to make it the extra littlest bit prettier. Gorgeous. Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love, about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, yeah. oh yes with Xfinity X5. Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love, about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, yeah. oh yes. With Xfinity X5. Good morning, welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Let's get this bad boy unwrapped. You can see the cream has kind of set. All it's missing is just a little bit of a garnish, some cocoa powder. You wanna be nice and delicate, gently tapping your strainer. 
to get just wisps of this gorgeous cocoa powder. And finally, it's time to dig in. Hmm. I think I want this corner piece. Glides right in there. Those lady fingers have softened beautifully. Can you see those layers? The lady fingers have truly absorbed all of that coffee, and there's very little of the actual cookie left. It's super soft, and those gorgeous layers of cream, I can't wait to take a bite. This is definitely the perfect pick-me-up and one of my favorite ways to enjoy coffee. Ooh, and it looks like I have a little bit of espresso left. Don't worry, I have another sweet trick up my sleeve. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Please. You are <laughs> bad. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. I'm not much of a drinker. But when a cocktail tastes like dessert, I can definitely get down with it. The first espresso martini is credited to a British bartender who first served it in the 1980s. But unlike most nightcaps, this one packs a punch and will keep you up at night and keep that party going. So take it easy. People love this drink because it's so easy to make. The classic version has three ingredients, but I like to add a little something special to mine. Start with a cocktail shaker, of course something to measure everything in, a strainer, and some booze. I'm using vodka and coffee liqueur in this. The first step is to load your cocktail shaker with some ice. Then I took the leftover espresso that I had, threw it in the fridge to get it nice and cold, and I'm going to add two ounces straight into our cocktail shaker. Up next is our vodka one and a half ounces of that. Right on in. Then for a little extra punch, an additional coffee flavor, some coffee liqueur, just a half of an ounce. Then for my little extra ingredient, sweetened condensed milk. It's a little unconventional, but it adds a little sweetness and just a little more creaminess and it's a little reminiscent of like a Vietnamese iced coffee. One tablespoon of that right on top. Then just like our shakerado, we want to shake this vigorously. Get all those ingredients well combined. At least 15 seconds. Okay. Our shaker is super frosty. And if you thought my shakerado glass was bougie, you ain't seen nothing yet. Look at that bad boy. Grab your strainer. A 
Look how delicious, how creamy. Get every last bit of that. Now, if I didn't already have a decadent dessert waiting for me, what I would do is make an espresso martini affogato. First, I would shake up an espresso martini, just like this one. Then I would fill a glass with two scoops, three if I really feel like treating myself, of premium vanilla ice cream. Pour that delicious martini right on top and enjoy. But for now, this will definitely do the trick. Cheers. You can never have too much coffee. Welcome to a Today All Day Live special, COVID in the Classroom, a guide to unvaccinated kids. As millions of unvaccinated kids prepare to head back to school, parents, educators, and the public have many unanswered questions about what this school year will look like and how we can make it as safe as possible. That is why today we have assembled a team of experts with one goal in mind to help you prepare to safely and confidently send your child back to school. Before we meet our panel of experts, Take a look at the facts as we know them now. As children head back to the classroom, a new school year bringing new COVID concerns. A 700% increase in overall U.S. cases since July, with the more contagious Delta variant responsible for the most new COVID cases nationwide. The biggest concern is that the virus will continue to mutate, and it will, and that it could become more deadly or evade the immune response more efficiently. Those at risk, the unvaccinated, including children under the age of 12 who are not yet eligible for a shot. This idea that children don't get infected or children don't transmit, that's not the case with Delta. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, pediatric hospitalizations for COVID-19 have rapidly climbed in the past month. We've got children in the ICU, uh, uh, age range from two months to 16 years, uh, four, you know, four or five on the ventilator at any given time. The FDA granting full approval to the Pfizer vaccine, bolstering New York City's announcement that Department of Education employees must get vaccinated. We know this is going to help ensure that everyone is safe. Other states like Kentucky, Illinois, and Connecticut mandating masks in classrooms based on updated CDC guidance. And in spite of protests from parents. These masks are not a symbol of anything other than prevention and protection. To politicize this is quite frankly uh, hitting a new low. All efforts to keep children learning in person after more than a year away from school for some. The best way to get students caught up is to have them in the classroom learning with their teachers, with their peers. Let's yeah. all do our part to get our students back in school. They've been waiting. Well, I know so many of you have questions today, so we are going to dig in. So we are joined now by NBC News senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres, and past president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, Dr. Sally Goza. Thank you both for talking with me today. You bet, Shannon. Good morning. Dr. Torres, let's, let's start with you. One of the main reasons I think we're in this place at this time is because, frankly, as kids go back to school, so many kids under the age of 12 still haven't been vaccinated, and a lot of people aren't eligible for the vaccine, obviously, and most of our kids. So how close are we to an approved vaccine, and is this something we'll see, in your opinion, this school year? And Chanel, that's the biggest question I get from parents almost every day. And the answer is yes, I think we are going to see this this school year, and we're going to see it for a variety of groups. But here's what they've done, is they've essentially divided it into three groups. And they divided it by their essentially their weight, their body maturity, their immune system status, so that way they can focus on those groups. And right now, like you mentioned, 12 and above can get the vaccine. The next group they're looking at are 5-year-olds to 11-year-olds. They're doing those studies right now. As a matter of fact, they're doing all these studies concurrently, and they're getting ready, ready to submit 
submit the data. Pfizer said they think they'll submit by mid-September. And so what that means is probably before Thanksgiving, we'll, be, we'll see pro an emergency use authorization for this age group, the five to 11 year olds. But now we have the other age groups to look at, and that's the two to four year olds, and then the six month to two year olds. That's probably more in the, in the early 2022 timeframes because it does take more time to do those studies. And the reason it takes time to do these studies is because as we always learned in medicine, children are not just small adults, which essentially means we can't just take the adult dosing and say, ah, let's cut it in half and give it to children. Their immune systems are different, the bodies react differently, so they have to they have to look and calculate the variety of doses they need. They have to go ahead and test those doses in the human trials and test the intervals too, because it's possible they need shorter intervals or longer intervals. This is information they need to find out. Once they find that out, making sure it's safe and effective, the two big things we want, they'll submit that data. Then the FDA and the CDC will go through the same steps they went through for the adults and the 12 and above. And again, for five to 11 year olds, we're thinking sometime before Thanksgiving, for four to two to four year olds, probably early 2022, and then six month to two year olds, probably more in the springtime, but it should happen this school year. It's good information. It's almost a tap dance because as parents, you know, we're anxious to get it. But at the same time, obviously, we don't want to rush things. Um, Dr. Goza, let me bring you in here. I have just full disclosure. I have three little ones. I have twins heading into fourth grade and my oldest is heading into sixth grade. He'll be 12 on Friday, in fact. And what everybody, I think the hot topic amongst my parent friends, if you will, I think at first we just assumed that COVID wasn't as big of a threat to children. So, you know, we put our kids masks on. We tried to keep them outside for play dates, but the worry wasn't as strong. I would say as it is now, because everybody is worried about this Delta variant. We're not quite sure if our kids are more susceptible. What is what is the research showing at this point? You know, no low risk is not, not no risk. So children exactly. have been getting COVID all along. We've had over 4 million children with COVID. Um, we've had um, 18,000 children admitted and um, close to 400 and something deaths. So it's not no risk. And this Delta variant is different. It's It's more contagious which means more children are getting the illness. Um, we've had 180,000 new COVID cases in children just from August 12th to August 19th. And so we're seeing this now and it's spreading rapidly. It has, it's very, very contagious. And so that's so the difference this year. Well, here's my question then. You know, a lot of our kids are back in the classroom. I know my kids are back in the classroom. And just like last year, they wore their masks. You know, they have screen face shields when they eat their lunch and things worked pretty well last year. But if the Delta variant is more contagious, I feel like a lot of the schools have kind of pulled back just a little bit to try to get a little bit more, I guess, normalcy, if you will. Should we be concerned? Should our schools not be pulling back at all? If anything, it seems like we should be more ramped up as we head into the school year. We, we believe that schools should be doing the same things they did last year. All those layers of protection are what's so important. I like to call it the Swiss cheese. And with every layer we put in there, we are decreasing the risk of our children getting COVID-19. And so masking, mandated masking, distancing, um, you know, washing their hands, good ventilation, all of those things are still just as important this year, if not more than last year. And one more question for you, Dr. Goza. Um, tell me then at this point, what are the signs we should be looking out for um, in children when it comes to the Delta variant? Because I've heard the symptoms kind of manifest themselves a little differently. You know, this Delta variant can look almost like anything. It can be a runny nose, it can be a cough, it can be a sore throat, it can be a headache, it can be vomiting and diarrhea. So if your child is sick, you need to keep them out of school and you need to contact your pediatrician or your doctor to have them evaluated to see what you need to do. And especially if they've had a contact in school that you know of, they need to be, be checked because it can really look like any other virus out there. All right, let's get to some more specific questions from our viewers. Um, this first question is from Instagram. Dr. Goz, it's for you. How common is long COVID in children? And for those who aren't familiar with the term long COVID, can you explain what that means and how common it is in kids? So long COVID just means that the symptoms are lasting longer than what their quarantine is and lasting into you know a month to two months and even longer. And we've seen it in adults. There was one study that actually said there were about 50% of teens and young adults that had long COVID long haul COVID. Um, and so it, it's a concern. We really don't know how many children are affected by this because we know a lot of children have been asymptomatic with their COVID. And so we don't know if the symptoms we're seeing in some of these kids are not the fact that they had COVID back before and were never tested for it because they were asymptomatic. And the, and the, the symptoms are fatigue, brain fog, trouble breathing, a constant cough, chest pain, 
muscle and, and joint pain, headaches, depression and anxiety, heart palpitations, smell and taste loss, which we do know. I mean, I think most people would recognize that as a COVID symptom. And sometimes being dizzy when they stand up, a dizziness in our mm. teenagers. So these are really common things we see in teenagers anyway. And so it's, it's really hard to know. Um, and our concern is the more children that get COVID, the more children we'll see with these long haul symptoms. It's so scary. Dr. Torres, let me bring you in here. It's interesting. I think, I feel like there are a lot of us who are more nervous this time around than last year. I don't know why. I think it's because it just feels so with this variant. There's just so many unknowns. Let's get to a question from Cheryl in New Jersey. Um, she says, are kids that ride the bus to school, to and from school, at greater risk to contracting COVID? That's a good question. Yeah, it is a great question. And a lot of kids will be riding the bus. And I'm going to break it into two different segments, both waiting for the bus and then once you're on the bus itself. Waiting for okay. the bus, not necessarily because you're in an outdoor environment. We know it doesn't spread that well in the outdoors. And so particularly if you're not in a crowded bus stop, then the risk is very low that anything might pass from child to child. But you still want them to be safe. If it's, if it's a crowded bus stop, then definitely make sure they're wearing masks and they're social distancing as much as possible. But once they get on the bus, think about any other type of transportation a subway, an airplane, anything like that. You're in a closed environment, especially if the windows aren't open. And so all the children should be masks. And hopefully the children are in a cohort or a pod where they're on the same bus with the students are in the same classroom with at school all day long. And that mm -hmm. way we know it doesn't spread between these pods, these cohorts. So the risk does go up, but it can be minimized. And the ways to minimize it are to make sure that they're seated separately apart. They have social distancing. If you can open the windows, open the windows to make sure ventilation is going through the bus and definitely wearing masks, Chanel. Can't overemphasize how important that is, especially while they're on the bus and they're in that closed environment. And then again, if somebody on the bus has some type of symptoms, if we think they're COVID positive, or if they look like they might be having COVID, then you need to make sure that others are isolated, contact tracing, all that's taking place as well to make sure that everybody stays protected, not just on the bus, at school and at home as well, Chanel. All right, let's get to a video question on that note. Dr. Torres, this is a video question from Jermail. Take a listen to this. As a concerned parent, my question to you would be, how often should the schools allow children to receive breaks from wearing the mask, especially those students who have underlying health conditions such as asthma or bronchitis? Another good question. Yeah, this is a fantastic question. I just went out to the Olympics and for 20 hours I wore this thing. And so I understand how you need breaks every now and then, especially for children. And the younger the children are, the more they're going to need breaks. And it depends on your environment, too. If you're in a hot, humid environment, which is where we were in Tokyo, boy, this can be tough to have on the whole day long. So you need to make sure they do have breaks. And the best way to do that is to have those breaks outdoors. If they're in recess and they're socially distanced and there aren't that many children out there, then they don't necessarily need to have masks on. That's a good place to have a break for them. And just doing that throughout the day, especially if you see them being uncomfortable in their masks or if they're fidgeting with their masks a lot or even sneaking, taking them off every now and then. Now, as far as the children have asthma or bronchitis, if it's not active at the time, if their asthma is under control, if their bronchitis is under control, then they should be wearing a mask as well, just like other children. But if they're having symptoms, if they're having shortness of breath, they need to be able to tell somebody that. So they should be, you should let them know if you're having issues, tell your teacher, tell the staff members there that you need to take that mask off and they'll make accommodations to make sure you do take it off. But the important part is twofold here. One is wearing that mask, but also making sure they wear that mask by giving them appropriate breaks. Best way to do that, Chanel, simply go outside. Absolutely. Dr. Goza, it is very easy to understand why so many parents perhaps watching us right now would say, you know what? This is too much. <laughs> My kid is staying home. We'll do remote learning one more year. I don't care. But at the same time, we hear experts say it's so important for our kids to go back to the classroom. It feels like such a tap dance. What's the answer here? You know, the American Academy of Pediatrics has strongly stated that we feel children should be in in-person learning if at all possible, but it has to be done safely. And just like we've been talking about, those children that are eligible 12 and above should get vaccinated if at all possible. <laughs> they should be wearing masks. They should be cohorting, just like we were talking about cohorting on the bus and cohorting in the, in the classrooms. They should not be gathering in large groups at the school. And they should be washing their hands consistently. But children have missed a lot by not being in school. You know, some children have trouble having access to the internet. They can't focus on looking at a computer screen. It's very difficult, um, you know, and so, and they've missed the social emotional interactions. And so 
it is really critical that we do everything in our power to make the schools safe so our children can be back in school and parents can feel comfortable sending their children to school. And so it really boils down to making sure we put all of those interventions that are, have been talked about so many times in place in our schools. Well, hearing what you guys say, I know there's been a little bit of controversy with some parents not wanting their kids you know, to wear masks, but after hearing what you guys have, have talked about, it seems even more important. So Dr. Torres, Dr. Goza, thank you guys so much for your time today. Absolutely. And we know Dr. Torres, by the way, will be sticking around in just a bit. Coming up next, we are answering the number one COVID question we received. We'll get to that. Plus, later, NBC consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn will join us to reveal her take. This is a good one on the best masks for your kids. Stay with us. Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to a Today All Day live special, COVID in the Classroom, a guide to unvaccinated kids. We're continuing to answer all of your questions today about what this school year will look like and how it will affect your loved ones, your lives, and your wallets. NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn has been at the forefront of this discussion. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, it's great to be here with you, Chanel. Absolutely, so here's the deal. There were a lot of unexpected costs for parents last year. You talk about laptops and iPads for virtual learning, to paying for private tutors, learning pods, and more. What are some money-saving back-to-school tips you can give parents? The struggle is real, yeah. Chanel, right? The National Retail Federation is estimating parents are going to spend $850 this year on school supplies. That's up about $60 from last year. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want you to do before you spend a penny is to call your school district to find out if they have any electronics for your child. If they need a laptop or a tablet, see if the district, not just the school, has any extras. Then consider the secondhand market. So that's sites like Swappa, Trade more, Gazelle. They have great secondhand electronics. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. So, what if you've never heard of those sites? Yes. <laughs> I'm a parent, I'm in the news business, and I wouldn't even know how to even, what are, I don't even know anything right. about those. You can do an internet search for used electronics or gently used electronics. I like these sites because the um, equipment is vetted, and okay. also a lot of times they offer a warranty. So, Swappa, Trade More, Gazelle. Okay. Those are ones you can look for. Okay. The other thing I want you to consider is shopping early because the sooner you can get out there, the more selection you have. Take advantage of the sales online, but don't hesitate to bring some of those prices to a brick and mortar store and say, hey, can you match this? Can you beat it? Okay. All right. So we had a lot of viewers submit questions. So let's get to some of them. The first one is from Kristen on Instagram. She asked, how do we get information on whether faculty is vaccinated? That's a good question. We must provide kids records yet no idea about the staff. 
Yes, yeah, so this is a sticky situation. If you're lucky, you live in a district like New York City, which mm. is the biggest public school district in the country, just yesterday announcing they will require vaccinations for all teachers and staff. LA Unified, second largest, already made that requirement. But here's the thing, it's okay. We talked to legal experts, we talked to etiquette experts. They say it's not illegal or rude for you to just be direct and ask the question. Sometimes it helps to lead with your own vaccination status, like, hey, I'm fully vaccinated. They suggested one way of talking to your educators at school, just saying, you know what, vaccinations are really important mm -hmm. to us. we just like to know what the status is of our teachers or the staff who are working with our students. Look, people don't have to answer, mm -hmm. but it's okay to ask. That's fair. That's good for a yeah. lot of things. Okay, so if, here's the deal. If school uh, goes back to remote learning this year, how can parents of children, especially younger children who need to be home, how do they speak to their bosses about the balance of maybe extending mm -hmm. you know, their work hours? I know a lot of people people who are dealing with this. The schools are ready for the kids to come back, but, you know, but sometimes the parents are still working remote. I mean, it's just kind of a tap dance for a lot of people. Totally, and we're still a little bit in limbo. Yeah. Nothing is 100% back to normal. So this is a conversation you don't want to shy away from having. Schedule it sooner than later, but make sure you've done your homework. Okay. Look back at what have you accomplished over this past few months or this year. How productive have you been at work? You are asking for flexibility. Don't forget, this is a company. They want to know what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. The good news here is, according to Monster and LinkedIn and several other workplace surveys, flexibility is the number one thing that employees want. Bosses know that. They're probably more willing to accommodate that now than any other point in history because we were all forced to have yeah. to work remotely. And some people shined and excelled. If you were one of them, then don't hesitate to highlight those accomplishments. Ask for what you need. You might not get it all at once. If you're asking for five days from home, ask for two or three. And Good say, advice. can we revisit this in a few months and then have another conversation? So the door is always open. It's constantly evolving. But you got to ask for what you need and make sure you tell them what you bring to the table, too. That's so good. So let's ask another question. This is from Instagram. This is a good question. How will school systems keep up with their teacher shortages and bus driver shortages due to mass resignations due to the pandemic? Yes, this is a very real concern. Mm -hmm. The National Education Association has said it is chronic underfunding and understaffing, but the pandemic really exacerbated this. Mm -hmm. So some districts are getting creative. They're trying to offer $2,500 signing bonuses for new bus drivers, for teachers. Some are relying on student teachers who are getting their master's degrees to come into the classroom. Others are asking for their substitute teachers to spend extended periods of time in the classroom. You know, we heard of a district in Delaware. They're giving parents $700 per student because they don't have bus service. Really? So they're trying to help offset the gas and transportation costs for wow. parents. So yeah, it is a tough time. Support your school districts, but realize that schools are trying to be creative about how they get people back in the classroom. That's good. We have an, a great question today. This yeah. one is from Carol from Facebook. She wants to know, why hasn't anyone come up with a shield for children? She says it would make mm. things so much easier. Yeah, so Carol, I think you're talking about those face shields. We right. saw a lot of them early on. And in the early days, some people were saying, well, these are effective, they provide eye protection. But as we've learned more and more about how the coronavirus is aerosolized and how it can travel, there are some concerns that because the shield only covers sort of your eyes and your mouth, but there are big gaps uh. underneath your chin, they're not recommended as a substitute for face masks. But I did bring this, Chanel. We okay. talked about this um, over the year. It's oh, called that's the right. clear mask, right? Okay. So this is something that actually works really well for um, teachers of deaf students or deaf students where you're trying to still be able to see what someone's saying and see their uh. face and their mouth. But, you know, you still get sort of the protection of a mask. So this is made by Clear Mask. There are other ones out there. This one's pretty comfortable. Do they have those for kids? So those are for kids or these adults are for, um, These are for adults. Those are adults. But they don't have kid sizes okay. in these. But they're pretty snug fitting, and you can always tie a knot in the back. That's what I do. My kids have learned to take adult masks that they have to and roll them to kind of make them tighter. Yeah, exactly. Because I think, you know, my mom is a teacher who's just retired. Sometimes teachers can't hear their kids. Right. Right, if they're trying to interact with them. Because oh, very much. we realize how much you look at lips when you're trying to hear someone. Yes. So maybe if the little ones have that, it could be helpful. Exactly. It's easier for the teachers to see what they're saying, easier for the kids to see what the teachers are saying if they're trying yeah. to teach them reading, for example. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's a good one. Right, a good question, really. If masks are going to be, you know, kids are having to wear them eight hours a day, mm -hmm. a lot of parents want masks that are 
comfortable, yep. but also effective. So you have some masks here. Yeah, I have so here. many masks. Every okay. time, let me tell you something. Every time Vicky <laughs> walks in our studio with things, we pay attention because you guys do your research. Yeah, we yeah. do. Okay, so this is, you know, the really basic mask that you're going to see on everybody, right? These right. are the kids' surgical masks. This is a small one. It's made in the age-appropriate sizes. They come from Protect Ed, but they come from all sorts of companies. Okay. This is going to be small for me, but I just want to remind parents that you really want to stretch out that child's mask and make sure it goes under their chin, and this part you want to mash right against their nose bridge, that's going to help with the mask not like slipping down okay. or being uncomfortable. Which is under their nose. We exactly. see that a lot. Exactly. We see yeah. that a lot. So the good old-fashioned surgical mask is perfectly okay. fine, safe. Okay. But I would say that, you know, cloth masks are also really helpful and useful. My daughters have been, really, over the past year and a half using these masks by Gravitas and Toki, and I'll tell you what they like about them. Okay. So this actually goes completely over your head, right? Okay. And so when the kids aren't wearing them, it's just around their neck. They don't misplace them or put them somewhere. Okay. Then, okay, again, this is small for me, but the other cool thing is you can actually just kind of loop them over your ears mm. and then it hangs around your neck. So it's not it's not tugging on your ears the way some of the traditional masks do. So if that's a problem for your child, you want to try this kind that's of design. Good. The other option is this mask actually also goes over their head. So for like a toddler, ah. see, that goes over their head. It stays a little better. On. My daughter started wearing this when she was four, okay. one of them, the youngest, and it was fine. It stayed on. She wore it through pre-K, had no problems. Okay. Um, the other mask that I also like, this one's made by Blue Cut Apron, but what I like about it is if you do like the ear loops, look for ones that are I adjustable. Like that. See? Yeah. So then it just, it's all about the fit. So the okay. best mask for your child is the one your child's going to wear, and you want two layers. Always remember that two-layered mask. This is good because it's a nice, tight cotton weave. So, so I was going to ask you that because we were hearing about, you know, we know N95s are good. Mm -hmm. These are second best is what we've heard that. We've heard the cotton isn't as good. How do we know? So I think, I mean, we look with, what the experts have been right. telling us, the public health experts and epidemiologists. The two-layer cotton mask is very effective, okay. especially what do kids need these for? When they're in the classroom, they're typically going to be about three feet away from their classmates. Hopefully the classroom's windows are open when it's possible. They've got better ventilation systems. And don't forget, kids should have mask breaks. Yeah. All the experts we've talked to, especially the ones that have children themselves, mm -hmm. have said during recess and when kids are outdoors, it's okay to let them take the masks off because the risk of getting COVID outside is just so low, the benefit of giving kids a chance to just relax and not have the mask on outweighs that risk. Mm -hmm. It's different, obviously, if your child has a pre-existing health condition that you are concerned about, then have them keep the mask on. And honestly, kids have been so resilient. I mean, I doubt you've heard your kids really complain. 100%. Honestly, I like to follow rules. That's what I was going to end on. I know there are a lot of parents who are watching right now. Your kids perhaps were fully remote last year, so this is your first time, you know, putting the kids back in school. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, my kids were in school last year. I didn't get a single complaint. And their parents, you know, the parents of my friends' kids or my kids' friends, they yeah. all say, um, kids didn't complain. Right. I, it, almost to the point where when we told them, you know, you're outside, you can take them off, the kids would still keep them on. Right. My, so, my daughter likes to wear it in the car. She yes. like the way the car It's almost like a blanket. So it's wears become, it. It's yeah. fine. It's really the parents. It's the adults that are more in a tizzy about mm -hmm. this. And I get it. You want your, you know, your teachers to be able to see your children's faces. I totally understand. Yeah. Masks are not forever. Yeah. We're almost on the other side. But vaccinations are going to make a big difference. Kids who can't get vaccinated, that's why people are asking them to wear masks in the time being when they're with other kids because we know they can transmit. COVID. Vicki, mm -hmm. is always solid information. Always good Thank to be with you, you, Chanel. Isn't she good? I know. <laughs> All right, the helpful tips. Up next, we are answering the number one question we received. That's right after this. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. 
Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad bad. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to a Today All Day Live special, COVID in the Classroom, a guide to unvaccinated kids. We're back with NBC News senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres, and now joined by Dr. Tina Carroll Scott, board certified pediatrician and medical director at the South Miami Children's Clinic to continue answering your questions. Thank you both for checking in with us today. Once again. Thank you. You bet Let's you know. again, we have a lot of Absolutely. We have a lot of video questions. So I want to start with our first one. Uh, Dr. Carol Scott, this one is for you. It's from Tiffany. Take a look. Hi, this is my daughter, Arabella. She's two and she has Down syndrome. And I'm wondering if somebody her age with Down syndrome is at greater risk for severe disease and death from COVID-19. Excellent question. Yeah, it, it is a great question. And um, we really don't have a lot of information on kids and Down syndrome and whether there's uh, increased risk for severe disease with coronavirus. It is true, however, that many adult people with Down syndrome are at higher risk for serious illness due to the immune deficiency related to Down syndrome and higher frequency of other conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and other respiratory difficulties uh, associated with a higher risk for serious illness. But with that said, the Delta variant could be a game changer um, with its, high, its higher rate of transmissibility and more kids being infected and hospitalized. So this will put not only kids with chronic medical conditions at risk, but even healthy kids, which we're seeing in many states now with low vaccination rates. So that's why it's so critically important for every eligible person 12 years and older to get vaccinated as soon as possible so that we can protect those young children who are not eligible yet. Yet, and especially those that are um, that are medically vulnerable. I want to veer off script just for a moment, not when we'll get to our next video question, but really, really quickly. Um, I have a lot of friends. My son, for example, turns 12 on Friday. He's a small little guy. I'm not the largest person in the world. And I've talked to a lot of friends who have kids who are on the smaller side, and their thought is, you know, are they too small? If it's if the vaccine isn't ready for an 11 year old and my my 12 year old is the size of a nine year old, for example, should I wait for a little bit? I know it sounds crazy, but I've heard so many parents, you know, amongst ourselves talk about this. No, um, it, it, it's actually not crazy. And in in the study trials, um, they had, you know, uh, 12 year olds with different weights. And so all of that has been tested. And so it should I mean, it's perfectly safe, regardless of what what the weight is. As we go down further with the younger age groups, I think that's that's why it's taking longer for the FDA uh, approval is because it is uh, much more dose dependent with the younger kids. But for a small 12 year old, it's perfectly safe. Okay. All right, Dr. Torres, let's go to our next question. This is from Tamara with a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. Look at this one. I've got an underlying condition. While I'm vaccinated, I'm still concerned that my children may bring home COVID-19 to me. What will the efficacy of my vaccine still be in the fall if I had the vaccine in the spring? These are great questions, Dr. Torres. You know, these are great questions, and especially the fact that she has an underlying condition that put, could put her at a higher risk for complications from COVID does need to be a little more careful, especially with children going back to the classroom. Hopefully in that classroom and in that school, they're masking, the staff is vaccinated, all those things that can really help make sure that nothing is brought back to the house. But as far as the effectiveness, the efficacy of these vaccines, well, we know they have started to decrease for a couple reasons. One is because of time. These vaccines have started to what we call wane over time. In other words, they gave a 
very robust immune response back in January, February timeframe when people were getting vaccinated. And we were talking about 95, 94% efficacy. We were hoping, if you remember, to get about 50%. That was the main goal over a year and a half, two years ago. We were surprised when we got this 94, 95%. But we also knew that over time that would start to wear off. And it looks like that is indeed happening, especially in other parts of the world where we're seeing about the eight month point is when it starts to drop off a little bit. Unfortunately, that also coincided with the Delta variant coming on. And the mm -hmm. Delta variant we know is much more contagious, seems to be able to break through the vaccine a little bit more. But in spite of that, we do know that right now it looks like this efficacy, this effectiveness has dropped down a little bit, but by a little bit, we're still talking in the 70-ish percent range. And so she definitely needs to protect herself because she has an underlying condition. Again, checking the schools to make sure everything's okay there, but also talking to your doctor, you know, they just recommended third dosing for those with these types of medical conditions. Does she qualify for that? She should be getting a third dose. And we have found out that with that third dose, it really boosts her immune system back up to that level, that high level that we really like. And for the rest of us, getting booster shots when that time comes is going to be important as well to make sure that we get that robust response and that robust response stays as long as possible, especially while we're trying to defeat the Delta variant and we're trying to get through this pandemic, Chanel. Good advice. All right, Dr. Carol Scott, let's get to another question. This is from a viewer, Charlene. She's a mom of a first grader. Take a look. My daughter is six years old and going to the first grade. Her school does require masks, but is there anything else I can do to protect her? So we all want to know. Yeah, so this is a question that is on every parent's mind right now with children too young to be vaccinated. And I guess the first thing I would say is to give yourself grace. Um, there are mm -hmm. things that we can control and other things that we can't. And we all have just, you know, we have to try to do our best to advocate for the safest environment possible for our children. Um, the first thing I, you know, I think we need we need to do um, is to put pressure on our, our kids' schools to make sure that every eligible individual within the school is vaccinated. Parents have to raise their voices now more than ever to make sure that the schools are setting children up for success and not failure. And we do know that high vaccination rates in teachers, staff, and students over the age of 12 will not only protect the vaccinated individuals, but those who aren't eligible um, to be vaccinated yet, such as children under, under 12. We have to continue wearing the masks and it's great that your school is already requiring masks because we know that masks help to reduce transmission of this virus in a school setting. And I would also encourage you to find um, a comfortable, well-fitted mask um, that makes it easy for your child to keep it on all day because that will also make a difference as far as you know, really helping to reduce the transmission of this virus in a school setting. Um, and hopefully you know, the school has also implemented other strategies to improve ventilation and to encourage more instruction outdoors when weather permits and um, and really just continuing with all of the mitigation strategies that we've all been been using for the last year and a half with physical distancing and hand washing as well. Just have to hang on a little longer. That's good advice. All right, Dr. Torres, your turn. This is from Annalisa. She's in California. Look at her question. I have two little ones. Are parents even protecting their kids by getting vaccinated? Absolutely, by far, parents are protecting their children by getting vaccinated. And here's the way to look at it. We call it the Swiss cheese approach, doing the layered protection because everything going on here is like those holes you see in Swiss cheese. You know, they're not necessarily lined up. So if you can get layered protection, you can certainly help out. And that means social distancing. That means wearing masks. That means washing your hands, sanitizing your hands. That means contact tracing. You know, making sure those around them are protected as well. And they're protecting you and your children. But the big the biggest thing by far is to make sure that, children, that, that the adults around the children are vaccinated because like we've talked about, children under the age of 12 can't get their vaccines yet. And so the best way to protect them is to make sure that we as adults who are around them are fully vaccinated. That means we're much less likely to catch the virus. We're much less likely to spread the virus to them. But we also know that that's not an absolute. That's not a guarantee. And so that's why you want those other layered approaches as well, especially if you're in different environments indoors with people who might not 
not be vaccinated, you wear masks, social distance, all those things that we know work. And, you know, two years ago, none of us would have ever thought about asking somebody's medical status when they come to your house. Well, now it's not rude at all to say, if you're going to come to my house for a play date, if you're going to come to my house yeah. for dinner, what's your vaccination status? I want to protect my children. I want to make sure they're safe. Are you fully vaccinated? And if you're not fully vaccinated, it's not rude to say, you know, let's wait until after the pandemic. We'll pick this all up again. You know what? I'm so glad you mentioned that. And it can be uncomfortable. I had to do it with a relative, a cousin coming into town. You know, it's it, I felt bad, but it, it kind of is what it is, as they say. Exactly. I'm going to squeeze in two more. Yeah, squeeze in two more questions here. Uh, Dr. Carol Scott, we keep talking about masks. Let me get to this question. We've kind of talked about it a little bit, but we have new people tuning in every moment here. Um, this one is about it says my daughter is four years old and required to wear a mask in school. Every time I see a photo of my daughter, I see that her mask is not on correctly. How much are masks really protecting our kids? I know we've said it, but I'll, I'll, let's answer her question. Yeah. Okay, so the most important thing is finding a mask that fits correctly and allows for easy breathing. And I have to say, even as a physician, um, it's hard for me to find a mask that fits comfortably uh, that decreases my own fidgeting. So I think finding a mask that's made specifically for um, for kids, especially younger kids, um, that fits properly, um, allows them to breathe easy without gaps around the sides. And I think even um, adjustable ear loops are useful as well with younger kids. And I think just reinforcing why masks are important and modeling that behavior when you go out in public um, with your children so that it's not just a behavior for the school environment. Uh, kids are in inherently rule followers and they want to be good citizens. And so I always make a point to applaud my young patients who wear their mask correctly in the office. And I thank them for helping to protect those around them who could get mm. really sick from the virus if they got infected. And remember too, that the mask alone won't protect kids in school. So it is gonna be a layered approach Approach, as we discussed before, which includes vaccinations for those who are eligible, hand washing, the distancing, testing, and, and contact tracing as well. All right. So the number one question is, is there an end in sight? <laughs> will, will this be with us forever? I'm going to have to put you push a pause button there. You're going to have to answer that question after the break because we have to take a quick break. So think about that answer because I think that's what everybody wants to know. So thank you guys. And we'll talk to you in just a bit. Uh, coming up, And then we have some good stuff here. Stick around. We have kids asking questions later in the show. They're going to do that. All right. Up next, how does another school year clouded by a pandemic affect our kids' mental health? There's another layer to all of this. And how can we protect our kids physically, and emotionally. Hang with us. We're going to talk with a psychiatrist coming up in just a bit. Stay with us. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. 
Welcome back to a Today All Day Live special, COVID in the Classroom, a guide to unvaccinated kids. As a mom, I know it is not only our kids' physical health that we all worry about, it's also the mental toll another year of masks and social distancing could have on them. So to answer all of your mental health questions and concerns, we're joined now by board-certified psychiatrist, Dr. Sue Varma. Hi, good to see you today. Hi, Chanel, great to see you. Let's dig in here. This is looking like another tough year. Are our kids at their breaking points or are we projecting onto our kids because a lot of parents are stressed? Yes. So um, yes and no. So I, I don't think our kids are at, the, are at their breaking point because kids are super resilient. But I can tell you this much, Chanel, that the numbers have gone up in 2021 when we look at emergency room visits for children. We know that in February and March of 2021, emergency room visits for teenage girls for uh, suicide attempts had gone up by 50 percent. The CDC also said that 25 to 30 percent, they saw an increase in emergency room visits for child mental health, child and adolescent, mm -hmm. young adult health. So we do know that the numbers are up. Breaking point, you know, that still remains. And I think a lot of it has to do with what we can do in prevention and early detection and early treatment. That will that will make the biggest difference. Let's talk about talking to our kids. I have three. One of them, an open book, my daughter. I, can, I don't even have to ask her a question. My other ones, not so much, especially my oldest. Are there, if you have a child who isn't as open to just having a conversation, what kind of questions can we ask our kids to get a better understanding of how they're feeling going into the school year? You know, I'm so glad that you're saying that really, you know, every child is different. I'm also a mom and I know that, you know, my opportunities for conversations with kids, they don't work the same way they do with my adult patients. So when I'm talking to adults, you know, if, if Chanel, you and I were to go for lunch one day, we would talk and, you know, we would say, how are you doing? And, you know, the idea is that we would open up. Children, I, I noticed two big things. One is you have to spend time with them. And it's in those unexpected moments um, on the way to school, on the way back from ice cream, in the car, when you're hanging out and watching a movie, things will come to them naturally. And usually it takes time for them to warm up and to feel safe and to feel comfortable. So plan for those extended lengthy, I'm sitting here, I'm waiting for you to talk. But if they don't, ask them questions that are open-ended and neutral. What happens is we often ask questions like, you're not sad, are you? Everything is fine, isn't it? And there's a way to mm. invite conversation and there's a way to shut it down. If you were to have a more neutral, gentle question to say, how is everything? And then make it more narrow, more narrow and specific. How are you feeling? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling about your friendships? How is that you know, mean girl or mean boy stuff going on in school? How are you finding your classes? Is it hard? Are you enjoying it? Which is your favorite class? And another thing I find really helpful is asking them about their friend. What I love about this is that it takes the focus off of them, but it still lets you know what's happening in their peer group. And a lot of times children will express what they're feeling through other people. So-and-so is thinking about trying, you know, a substance. So-and-so is talking about getting peer pressured into X and Y. What do you think about that? And they're testing you out. They're feeling you out to see, is this something that's going to make you angry? And the minute they see that you're angry, they're going to want to shut down and move away. So when you notice they're talking about their friends, don't cast a stone on their friend. Be like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what was going mm. on in that mind. And a lot of times fiction, reading books, watching TV, talking about characters and complicated situations that the characters fall into make it very safe ground for, for children to talk about their own feelings. Is there anything, I think you've probably alluded to it, is there anything as parents we can do now to help, I guess, our kids' mental health issues that could surface, especially from this pandemic in the future? Anything else we need to be doing in this moment? Yes. Number one, we have to recognize the warning signs. I can't stress this enough. It's recognizing the warning signs and then immediately talking to your pediatrician. And don't say to yourself, I might be overreacting. Am I going overboard? Let your doctor be the one to figure that out. And I would say book a mental health visit specifically if you're seeing symptoms or signs of low mood. The person is not getting out of bed. The child isn't interested in activities. Their grooming has gone down. They're clingy. They're um, isolating. They're irritable. They're having difficulty sleeping at night. Um, they don't want to go to school. They're talking about a lot of um, unexplained symptoms. My head is hurting. My stomach is hurting. And you've gotten everything mm. checked out. They're regressing in their behavior. They're bedwetting. So even a very quick pediatrician visit to say, hey, we're just doing a check-in. How is everything? How is school? And if you need to even leave the room, if you think that your child might be open to, but that's something that I would leave up to the parent. But then I would say that even a few sessions of therapy can be really helpful, cognitive behavioral therapy. What we do know is that when kids do access treatment, they get better. What you can do mm -hmm. if your child 
able to access treatment um, or you're waiting for an appointment and the wait times have gone up. We're finding that a lot of times when kids go to the ER for psychiatric problems, it might be a panic attack, it might be anxiety attack. Um, they may not get an appointment for a long time. So I would say that carve in morning routines that are just about having fun. If your kid wants to watch a video, let them before school. If they feel really anxious and they want to do deep breathing exercise, have them lay down and put a stuffed animal on their belly and say, let's just count. Let's just have fun. Let's see what you can do with your stuffed animal. Can you move it? Um, some people really find benefit in coloring books. Some people might want to do a quick bike ride. Um, exercise and movement is super helpful with kids. So is distraction. So is having rewards and planning fun things, um, having outdoor play dates with, with vaccinated adults and children uh, that might be eligible. Um, but really just, I call them the four M's of mental health, movement, mindfulness, mastery, and meaningful engagement. Get your kid into a new hobby, get them in, involved in the kitchen. Emma Dylan is always doing that with her son. So mm -hmm. get your kids, get their hands dirty, get them to garden, get them to plant, get them in nature, hikes walking by the, wa the water, get them out of their head is my, is my point. Really quickly, you know what I'm noticing? The little ones, it's easier to facilitate that. Breathing or yoga or getting my nine-year-old in the kitchen. It's my tween, the 12-year-olds, the 13-year-olds, the 14-year-olds. Those parents are having a tough time trying to reach them for techniques. Yes, yes, it's really hard. And you know what? Sometimes I say that having a trusted adult or a cousin or somebody that might be closer in their age, um, if there's an, uh, a young adult in their family, like an older cousin or a relative in their 20s, like sometimes you're not gonna be the be all and end all. And the kids associate a lot of times parents with discipline. You want me to do something, stop annoying me, stop telling me to clean my room. So you might have to pull back a little and pick, pick and choose your battles. And you might have to say, all right, mm. well, you know what? I'm going to um, triage here and having a messy room as long as it's not a sign of depression and that your cleanliness and your hygiene and grooming don't reflect a mental health problem. It's just you and it's a teenager. I know a lot of parents of teens and tweens are, are saying that my chatty cat daughter or son used to start has stopped talking to me. Um, so understand that there is going to be more of an emphasis on the peer group. They're less interested in you at that age. They're more interested in what the whole world is doing. And I would say that that's okay within reason. And then you might have to put parental locks or limitations on their screen time, know what they're watching, and then just say, hey, do you want to go for mini golf? Do you want to go for a burger? Do you want to go for ice cream? So like, you're not going to have so much conversation, but if you can plug another adult, a counselor, a teacher, one of the greatest things that I saw is um, I saw a teacher send a sign home to all parents that says, handle with care. And it was a sign that said, if your kid has gone through a rough day, just put this in their folder. And as a teacher, I'll know that you or as a family or your child mm. is going stuff at home and I'll give your kid a pass. So I think it's really great when the teacher and the parent can collaborate and understand that mental health doesn't, it, problems don't ever exist in a vacuum. It's really a whole family problem. It's a, it's larger and it's a society issue and we have to take care of one another. And as a parent, we must absolutely prioritize our mental health. Before I was talking to you, Chanel, I was talking to a couple that I treat and they have three children. And I said to the parents, you have to prioritize your mental health. You guys are the directors mm. of this that you're running. So I'm glad that they took the times to prioritizing themselves and their relationships so they can have a stronger bond, stronger marriage, and then bring them their best selves to their children. Can I tell you something? I have been talking with you for years, and I think this is one of the best conversations we've ever had. There's so many things that you said that I think will speak to parents, even down to, gosh, I wasn't growing up in a pandemic. In high school, I was super stressed out, you know, A student, and I remember my room was always a mess. And looking back, I think that was the one thing my mom did right. She kind of just let me have a messy room. It was just kind of like my space, my sweet space. She didn't nag about it, and I turned out okay. You know what I mean? I just think sometimes more kids need a little grace too. Yeah. Dr. Varma, thank you so much for your time today. All right. Up next, questions directly from the voices that matter most, our kids. That's right after this. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and the reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity x -Fi. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. That's your Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. 
Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to a Today All Day Live special, COVID in the Classroom, a guide to unvaccinated kids. Our goal when we began working on this special was to help you prepare to safely and confidently send your child back to school. We know as parents we have a lot of questions for the experts, but so do our kids. So we asked them to let us know what was on their minds. And to help us answer those questions, we're back with board-certified pediatrician and medical director at the South Miami Children's Clinic, Dr. Tina Carroll Scott. Thank you again for, for talking with us. So let's hear from some kiddos, shall we? Okay, so our first one is from, I like this name, Ashton. He's five years old. Listen to this. Is it safe to, for me to eat lunch and snack at school? That's a fair question. Yeah, and it's, it's actually a great question. And I think the easiest way to answer you is to say that there are safer ways um, for you to eat lunch and snacks at school, um, which will help to reduce the spread of this virus. Um, probably the first thing is um, is distancing. And so even, uh, you know, being away from another student, you know, a minimum of three feet is helpful. And I know that's not always possible in all school settings, but uh, the further away that you, you can be away from another student during lunch, um, the better off it's gonna be as far as reducing spread. If you live in an area where the weather permits and your school allows you to eat outside, that's also a great option. The, the more ventilation you have, um, the, you know, the better it is as far as reducing transmission of this virus. And there are some schools that are also allowing students to eat meals in the classroom with the same group of students. And that also has been found to be helpful as far as um, reducing transmission of, of the virus. But um, there is there's no 100% um, effective way to do that um, in a school setting with, you know, especially during lunch and with, with eating snacks. But again, um, you know, trying your best is all that we can ask. And, um, and I wouldn't get very stressed out about that. The most important thing is that you're in school and you're able to socialize with, with your friends and hopefully have a more a more normal experience this school year than last school year. All right, let's squeeze in one more. Six-year-old Joaquin, take a listen to this. Is using hand sanitizer at school the same as washing my hands? So it's not exactly the same. So washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds is the preferred method. But with that said, that may not always be available to you in a school setting. And so using hand sa sanitizer is um, a great second option. And making sure that you're choosing a hand sanitizer that's alcohol-based. Um, and you're probably not going to know this, but hopefully your school has um, alcohol-based sanitizers that have at least 60% alcohol. And that's, that's a great option as well and more readily available. We only have seconds left. Is there an end in sight? I teased this. This was the number one question. What would you say? Yeah, so there is an end in sight because all pandemics eventually end. But I think we have to decide as a society how we want that ending to look. 
And if we value not only our own lives, but those of people that we may not even know. And I think that's, you know, what's clear from everything that we've seen over the last few months is that the vaccines are a key component to ending this. And it can't All be right. only certain individuals or groups getting vaccinated. It's going to take yeah. every eligible eligible citizen doing the right thing. Dr. Carol Scott, to all of our experts, thank you for talking with us today. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again. And as you can tell, information is constantly evolving. So be sure to check with your district and your state. This has been an excellent conversation. I hope it's been helpful for you. We'll see you soon. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices whenever and however you watch with Xfinity x -Fi. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity x -Fi. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. With Xfinity x -Fi. We are exploring one of the nation's newest police academies that is setting out to break a lot of barriers. Craig's in Minneapolis with more on this. Hey, Craig, good morning. Hey, guys, good to see you. You know, I'd never seen a police academy like this. Uh, to your point, though, you know, over the last few years, there really have been widespread protests here in Minneapolis, all over the country, calls to defund the police, waves of early retirements by officers stepping into this moment are nine students graduating today from the police academy at Lincoln University. It's the first ever at a historically black college or university, and the chief who started it says it's an effort to create the change he wants to see. Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Across the country, voices sharing outrage and frustration in the wake of police violence, calling for a reckoning over how officers protect and serve. One possible solution can be found on a hill overlooking Jefferson City, Missouri. This is Lincoln University, an historically black college founded to educate black veterans of the Civil War. The history here at Lincoln is, is so rich. Yes, sir. That like history inspired story. Chief Gary yeah, Hill the, uh, the first officer, and I will to open the first police academy first, at an HBCU. How did this come to be? So I started calling the contacts that I've made over the last 20 years. People were like, that is a great idea. Why hasn't anyone thought about that? In a building bearing the address 911 and elsewhere, the students do their coursework. Among them is Andre Jefferson. You decided to become a police officer around the same time this country was dealing with the murder of George Floyd, the killing of Breonna Taylor, all of that's happening, and meanwhile, Andre decides, you know what, I want to wear the uniform. Yes, sir. How did you deal with that? I can't let that situation stop me. People are, you know, I'm going to lose friends, I'm going to lose family. You got to stand for who you are. Go achieve your goals, be who you are, make something out of yourself. Prove people wrong. 
The latest research shows 67% of police officers in the United States are white. Just over 12% are black. That closely mirrors the racial makeup of the general population. But recent data shows that two-thirds of large police departments are whiter than the communities they police. Chief Hill says black officers walk a line between their work and their communities. In some ways, that makes them uniquely qualified to do the job. How is the approach to training at an HBCU, how is it different than it might be at another law enforcement training academy? Our curriculum is the same curriculum that's taught across the state. So there's really not that much different with the exception of the discussions that we have in class. They watch videos of recent high profile episodes searching for meaning, debating how to do better. As you hear the students having these discussions, what are you thinking? Even though the minority of uh, students in this class are white, the majority are black, it's good to see the discussion and the different chain of thoughts that they have. Not everyone sees it the same way. Yeah, why did you the day we were there, the students put what they'd learned to the test. Chief Hill set up a mock road rage incident. The students didn't know what they were responding to. You were speeding through the light. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Officer Henderson. It becomes obvious pretty quickly that they are not in the classroom anymore. Hey, one at a time, sir. No, no, listen to me. Andre arrives as backup. Over here and talk to you. That's ridiculous. Together, they managed to separate the enraged drivers. Index, index, in the scenario, in the scenario. When it's over, the chief doesn't sugarcoat the criticism. When we get here and there's chaos going on, what should you have done? Separate. Separate. Did you do that? No, yes, sir. But he also works to build up his students. Have faith and confidence in yourself, okay? Because when you get out there and you don't have faith and confidence in yourself, they will know that. Hi, guys. What's going on? Tiaja Fairley is next. She's from East St. Louis and says she'd never seen a black female officer growing up. Sorry, what's your name? She kept the fact that she'd entered a police academy a secret from family and friends until recently. During the exercise, she's able to de-escalate the situation. Can you stay right here? I'm going to talk to him. Yeah. We talked to her afterward. I feel like it's just learning how to talk to people. Tiaja now dreams of becoming a homicide detective. You know, I feel like I could be a role model, kind of. Well, I hope to be a role model because I've never seen nothing like this. Calm both the parties down. That's the chief's dream, to put these young people in the driver's seat and guide them to a better future. And, and here's the thing, all of the students that we talked to who are graduating today, they all have jobs lined up as well. And the chief said that uh, they've also got 13 applicants for the next class. And the response beyond Lincoln uh, has been pretty incredible so far. Departments around the country, they've sent messages of support. Some have even donated gear to the program. Uh, the chief has been asked to come to the White House uh, and, and brief on the program there and how maybe they can take it to scale, guys. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a brilliant yeah. idea. Yeah, when you is. see it, you're like, why hasn't that been around for a long, long time? And what that one female officer said is so important mm -hmm. that if, you know, growing up, seeing yeah. police officers who look like you, yeah. like all the, I still remember in Queens growing up when the first time there was a, a beat police officer yeah. uh, in, in my neighborhood. It was like, wow, that's, that's wow. that yeah. makes a difference. Wow. Make a difference. That was yeah. a good story. Thank you, Craig. That was terrific. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on. We begin with breaking news right now in Florida. And a reliable connection for all your devices. This story matters to all of us. Whenever and however you watch. A bite-sized mix of everything you love, about all four hours of our show, but half the calories. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. With Xfinity X5. 
make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Hey, you all are, you all? On June 6th, 17-year-old Eric Lucas led a Black Lives Matter demonstration in Shorewood, Wisconsin. But the peaceful protest took a turn when a white woman spat in Eric's face. Injustice anywhere is a detriment to justice everywhere. Day in and day out, my hope diminishes. The hope that my people and me, a young black man living in a white America, can one day be equal. Eric grew up in an abusive home and eventually landed in foster care. At a young age, I've seen a lot. Had to adapt to a lot, had to learn from a lot, had to grow up and be more mature at a younger age. So I could adapt and continue to move forward. At age 13, he was placed with the McCorkle family, who later became his guardians, moving him to the suburb of Shorewood, Wisconsin. Everything changed. My world flipped upside down. I'm coming from poverty and I'm coming from the, the poor parts of Milwaukee. So I'm in a predominantly white neighborhood with folks that I feel like don't understand me. Immediately, Eric says he felt out of place in his new school. The first month of me going to school at Shorewood Intermediate School, a white kid uh, that lived in Shorewood as well told me to get on the bus and ride, like catch the city bus back to where I'm from. In the streets, where is that? We all take our feelings back. But soon he would find his footing with a group of friends who shared his views. Some of my best friends that I'm still cool with today they introduced me to an organization called Urban Underground. And Urban Underground taught me a lot about systemic oppression and how to point out systemic oppression, how to fight systemic oppression. Through that education, Eric felt compelled to speak out against racial injustice for himself and his community. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of seeing other folks that look like me being tired of this, and I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of seeing it on the news. I'm tired of growing up and watching it happen all my life and me still sitting here and not doing anything. I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of feeling like I have to be the voice for my people. And as Eric watched the killing of George Floyd, he knew he needed to stand up. I just thought, okay, what can I do to create a symbol? Not a symbol of peace, not a symbol of equality, but a symbol of tiredness and a symbol of affirmative action, a symbol of fighting back. And I came to the conclusion that it's time to march. And march he did. On June 6th, Eric organized a peaceful Black Lives Matter protest in Shorewood. My parents were there as well. I felt empowered. It was exhilarating seeing the crowd, seeing the people, seeing how we control the crowd and how the crowd listen and just stepping up to the plate and leading with, with the folks that I love and that love me back. But it was overshadowed by this incident that went viral of Eric being spat on by Stephanie Rapkin. She was later arrested and charged with disorderly conduct with a hate crime modifier. She has pled not guilty. I feel like I got a small piece of the point across. I feel like more often than not, the movement is lost in the assault because more people tend to focus on how I was assaulted and they don't really focus on the great work that we was putting putting forward. Despite the setback, Eric is determined to continue on his path. I'm going to start off by saying, hey, I love y'all. So I think right now, I'm feeling empowered by my people coming here to show out and show in support of me and people that look like us and people that, that that's not of my color to come out and support and show love to us as well. So just revolutionary, angry, motivated. I'm not tired, I'm energized. That young man is using his voice, Chanel Jones. Mm. Started at 15. Unbelievable. You know, it's so interesting when we started these stories, you know, once we started to see all of these protests, I was talking to our executive producer and we were thinking, you know, who are some of these young people who are out there on the front lines, black, white, you name it. Um, and can you imagine someone spitting in your kid's yeah. face um, and he's handling it so gracefully? Um, and one thing this proves is that every person out there has a story. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? 
Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Stay connected and stream the news you need with Xfinity X5. Our top story is unfolding right now. The fast speed you depend on and a reliable connection for all your devices, whenever and however you watch with Xfinity X5. Good morning. Welcome to today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. When you want to do something, you don't have to think in how old are you. Do it. 94-year-old Angela Alvarez is still living an incredible life. One that's taken her from Camagüey, Cuba to Baton Rouge and now Hollywood. I dance with him, and then I make, I put him like this, and I make exercise. Then I, I, I feel that I could be famous, but my father say, no, no. For more than 75 years, this great-grandmother has been singing and composing songs. Traditional Cuban music, personal, powerful, and until now, private. Music is such a, a big part of our culture, and it was a big part of your family as well. Mana's been singing to us since we were kids. Every chance she had to grab a guitar, she would sing to us. I began to get curious about these songs that she was singing. Then one day, I called her up and I said, I want you to sing me the songs that you composed and what they're about. And she walks out with these notebooks out of her room. There was like more than 40 songs. And these songs were like a diary of her life. That musical diary, the basis of the new documentary, Miss Angela, narrated by Andy Garcia. Andy, Angela's story very much is a story of, of so many Cuban Americans across this country. What was the hook for you that said, I have to do this? When I heard her music, I was so moved by it. I was moved by her story, and that was it. Angela's story began as a little girl, growing up in Cuba, writing her songs in secret, eventually getting married and starting a family. But in the 1960s, life took a turn after the Cuban Revolution. She made the painful decision to send her four kids to the United States as part of Operation Pedro Pan, the mass exodus of 14,000 unaccompanied Cuban children fleeing communist oppression. Angela eventually left Cuba for the U.S., reuniting with her family after five long years of separation. Was it difficult to make this movie? No. It was very easy for me because I wanted that people know what happened. The anguish she experienced, the love she felt, her life in exile, all of it written down in song, strummed on her guitar. What do you think it is about Cuban music that almost hypnotizes people? It's the very heartbeat of who we are, you know? And also for us exiles, it's a little something to ease the pain, you know? Sometimes you can't be where you want to be for many reasons, but you can build your culture and preserve it. And music does that. Music, you know, helps you find solace in, in the place that you are left behind. And for Angela, the dream that started in Cuba never died. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in finally making a teenage girl's dreams come true. Angela found her way to the stage, performing at the historic Avalon in Los Angeles, sharing her music for the first time in a major way. I pinched me many times, Angela, 
that's true. Are you dreaming? And it was a real dream. Yes, made me feel very happy. Now, Carlos is making sure his grandmother's music and legacy lives on, recording Angela's debut album with a lineup of Grammy award-winning musicians. Was it difficult to actually produce an album with your grandmother? It was probably the most fulfilling and gratifying experience of my life and my career. So, Angela, what do you think your father and your husband would think that you now have a movie and an album coming out? Well, if they was here, I know they feel proud of me. What a voice. And that spotlight is just getting bigger and bigger. Angela just landed a role in the remake of Father of the Bride alongside really? Andy Garcia, who's so wow. acting a movie now. Uh, that film, Miss Angela, is now streaming on iTunes and YouTube. And Angela's debut album is available on all streaming music platforms so you can buy it. Listen, I, this was obviously so personal for me because I'm, sure. I'm Cuban-American. It was yeah. amazing to hear her story, and it is a beautiful story. The music is incredible, and you don't have to speak Spanish to just really appreciate that type of music yeah. and her there story. There are hearts in it when she's right. singing it because they came from her heart. Yeah, and you, should, you, you almost want to translate the lyrics because they're so powerful and personal. Sure. Um, it was great. It was a great story to do, and, and I'm really excited about all the stuff happening there. That's yeah. Yeah. We're, we're Team Angela now. Yeah, 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 there you go. Andy Garcia looking pretty darn good. Yeah. Melvin with the pronouncer. Can oh. I get it one more time? Yeah. Angela? That, no, we'll take no, it. No. No. Suddenly Angela. you went to Angela Merkel. Oh, I know. <laughs> what I said the first time. German. There's like a little, little what I said the first time. G. We'll take it, man. We'll take it. <laughs> you went for it. So close. So close. <laughs> the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Where are you both? Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. I saw for the first time how there was no power, no agency inside of healthcare and its delivery in this country. That regardless whether you are covered, insured, financially stable or not, regardless, across all races, across all ethnicities, you have no power. I personally suffered at the hand of a system such as this. My name is Jenny Joseph, and I'm a midwife. I was 30. I came to Florida. Within a year of being in the United States, um, I was newly married and trying to find my way. I was working with an obstetrician, and for my whole adult life at that time, I'd had endometriosis, which is not life-threatening, but certainly miserable. And the physician I worked with started talking to me about certain types of surgeries that he could do. So I spent a full year, really, about four different surgeries with him. Um, no real results, except for I felt worse, and more pain, etc. Finally went for another opinion. And the other physician said, no, the only answer we have for you is we need to remove your uterus. Hysterectomy. I was ready, so I said yes. I didn't ask the right questions. I came out of that surgery not only minus my uterus, but minus my ovaries at 30 years old. And that was one of the most horrific awakenings. 
This was my sort of sort of welcome to America, and I was very overwhelmed by it. And I really sensed, I had a sense of such powerlessness around it. My husband was furious. It impacted our lives in a way that I can't describe. Um, luckily, I already had a child, but obviously that was it for me. And him, you know, it was done. I couldn't just accept it. I couldn't accept it. It got me up on my feet and I said, oh, wait, watch me. I'm going to fix this mess. And I wanted to fix it for myself, but I also felt like a, a, a drive to, to stand for women and literally stand in that gap and say, no, hang on, this isn't right. The vehicle I used was midwifery because I was already there. I was already a midwife. It's going to be 40 years that I've been doing this work. I feel strongly about how we are, as women, treated in a system where we don't know what to ask. We haven't got a voice. We're not heard. Black women, especially, are not heard. Native women, Hispanic women, Latinas, any woman who is other is not heard. There's been a lot more talk about maternal mortality recently in the United States. I'm here to say that this is not a new crisis. This has been here. It's just never been really taken care of. Maternal mortality is the death of a woman during pregnancy, labor and delivery, or postpartum. Statistically, it seems to fall around three to four times as many black women African-American women are dying in comparison to white women. This is being called this new crisis because now we're talking about it. I was so excited about this panel. It is timely. It is like beginning, I see the critical mass beginning around maternal health and maternal mortality issues. So I feel like I can finally, you know, speak to an audience that is particularly trying to hear. Oh, <laughs> I am so excited that Senator Harris is going to be there, um, Dr. Taylor, you know, the, the people that have been on the ground and are moving forward. Um, an opportunity to be able to present alongside of them and to support their work as well as, you know, show and talk about my own work. It is my great honor to welcome to the podium Senator Kamala Harris. Please give her a warm welcome. This is one of those truths that must be spoken. This issue of maternal health care and in particular how it relates and affects black women. It is an acknowledgement of the fact that women and babies are dying every day in America and that we could actually do something to stop it. And so the bill is an acknowledgement of the problem and that is to acknowledge that within the problem there is an issue of implicit bias. The other part of it is understanding that in order for this to actually work there has to be a community approach. It's going to be about saying that let's go to the medical schools and encourage that there will be training there about these issues, which are real issues. You know, these are uncomfortable truths we're speaking, right? Nobody wants to hear or even believe that this is happening, but it is. So let's deal with it. Let's take it on. If you can't get into care, you can't be helped, you can't be triaged, you can't be supported. So we opened up first with the birthing center, but we've expanded that into clinics for women who don't necessarily want a natural birth or a midwife, who actually just want prenatal care, right? And we've offered that you can get seen regardless of who you are, what you have, which card you're carrying, how much money. None of those things are of any interest to us at the beginning. We found that the easiest approach was to go ahead and say, just come on. You belong, you're pregnant, you're asking to, to be seen, let's go. From there, we can then help you get on Medicaid quicker because we know how to do it. We found that the women themselves relate better to our staff who are more in tune and more culturally congruent with them than the higher end, high credentialed, very expensive practitioners. So it's a midwifery model, which is a person-centered 
family-centered, um, equity-based model. Our statistics literally eradicated prematurity, low birth weight, and morbidity for the women in our care. The same women that again are populating the statistics that we're talking about today. Saying, yes, please, come on in, sit down, wipe your tears, we're here. Which doesn't actually cost any money. We found that this works. We have been able to replicate our work. We have studies that have proven our outcomes. And I really encourage all of us to start thinking outside the box. This is a matter of life and death. I don't know what we've got to wait for. But I'm worried about the fact that as this is being presented now, much of it ends up still blaming the woman. Wow, now we've discovered she's just too fat. If she wasn't so fat, she wouldn't have died. Oh, her blood pressure's out of control. If she was getting medical care, she wouldn't have had high blood pressure in the first place. And so in the blaming the woman, we're pinpointing what's wrong, but we're not addressing how it got to be wrong. This isn't a matter of women being non-compliant and don't care about their baby. Many of the studies research will come up with, oh, well, being black is a risk factor. No. Racism is a risk factor. The women that come to us come from all points. I've had one woman who came from Georgia every pregnancy. Just had a woman who came in from New York for a consultation. But what's always interesting to me is that that postpartum visit, there are tears, there's, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I'm not coming anymore. Like, I'm gonna miss you guys. I find it extremely worrisome that we have this little short window of time, the childbearing year, when we have some influence and connection with the women and their families and that just as soon as they are finished and moved on that they're out there in this void. We really haven't solved the problem. This is just the tip of the iceberg. It doesn't cost any money. It's really a shift of minds. It's an agreement that we are here only to center the mother. We're here only to get that full-term healthy baby that she's looking for, we're looking for, we're all on the same page. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. But I feel like I can do what I do, how I do it, in my little corner. But at the meantime, I still believe strongly that it's time to tell the truth. And so I am clear that no matter what, this work is making a difference and I'm going to keep going. Well, hello, hello, hello to all of you out there watching Today All Day. We are so happy that you're starting your week with us. Uh, this is Today in 30. This is where we give you everything that you might have missed from our show this morning. And we do it in just 30 minutes. And we have a lot to cover this morning. We're going to, of course, start with that situation down in the, in the bayou. Yeah, definitely. In New Orleans, in that area, we're here with everything you need to know about Ida. Boy, was it a long night in Louisiana. Flooding trapped some people who rode out that storm. More than a million people in that state without power. We're going to hear from Louisiana's governor coming up. Al, of course, leading our team coverage from New Orleans. So shall we get to it? Yes. It is time for Today in 30. Hey, everyone. I'm Tom Yamas for Today in 30. Just behind me, you can see some of the damage from Hurricane Ida. This is in the French Quarter. Most of the French Quarter is pretty much fine, but there are pockets of damage like this. This looks to be some roofing that came off, some siding, along with the traffic pole that came crashing down into one of the balconies here in the heart of the French Quarter. The big story, though, is going to be some of the damage, but also the power outages. Nearly a million people across New Orleans and southeastern Louisiana without power right now. That's affecting everything from electricity in people's homes to cell service to also some